You're right over there, Chris. You're right over there. All right, everybody, guys, you know what it is. The one, the only, the American Cholo podcast broadcasting live and directly from North California. My name is Gil, and I am the American Cholo. Try saying that 20 times. I'm like, man. <laughs> so today, my guest just pulled up. He is known for being a rapper. He's also an excellent tattoo artist and has just recently joined the cast of the No Names podcast. Mr. High Tone is in the building. What's up, High Tone? What's up, bro, man? What a blessing, bro. A little bit of traffic, but you can't complain, man. When you walk into a building like this, it's instant hospitality, instant professionalism, and just good energy, bro. I that's feel right, like that's I'm... the main thing in this world is the energy. Yeah, man. homie, not too shabby for a fucking cholo in here, right? Hey, fool, come on. Hey, as soon as you walk in, that's what I, and I love, I love people's reaction with that because a lot of people see the outside and they, you know, you think it's one thing, which is great. It's better to, to under promise when you're out there and you come inside, you're like, oh shit, wait a minute. I mean, dog, I always judge things off a restroom, bro. Let me get this down. And, um, oh, ah, he said and, I was judging up a restaurant. You know, it's just because you you know what someone takes care of, bro. Then that's 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 something that's that I as a business owner, Dope, you, you really have to like. That's you don't know who's gonna come in here and use that. You know what I'm saying? And I gotta give credit where credit is due. Like, uh, I mean, I'm the one that keeps up in this place, but I learned it from my wife, bro. My there wife, my wife is the one that like even before she'd if she'd come in here and the restroom was dirty or some, she'd be like, "Oh no, 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 you better clean that." Yeah. You better clean that. Like uh, and so now like every time I come in here and I come here frequently, I make sure, you know, things cleaned up and I'm the and cuz of her I also put little scent things on the oh, wall. Oh, you can smell it, yeah, bro. <laughs> so you walk in and you get that uh, everybody that walks in like, dude, it just it gives you that Nice it's light. like, you know, when you walk into your mom's house and she just, you know, fabuloso the Simone, floor, dog, and Simone. you're just like, homie, like, you just feel good because <laughs> you know you could take your socks off, walk around the floor, yeah, and ain't nothing brother. getting on that foot. You For know? sure, my man. But let's get into your story, man. Where were you born and raised at, Tone? Born and raised um uh, in uh, Covina, California. Oh, uh, from the Valle, homeboy. Queen of the Valley um, in West Covina. Uh, raised in Covina, you know the SGV, and and um, very very proud of of where I grew up and where I was born, bro. Because if you're not proud of where you came from, bro, you you're really not proud of nothing. That's you know? right, homie. So talk to me about uh, you know, your family in Covina. Was it just you? Were you like a first generation coming out here? Not nah, parents. Um, you know, mom and dad were born out here. Okay. Um, my father's side of the family was from Jalisco. Jalisco, por eso estás and, bueno, wey. Um, we, uh, you know, I was born into a, you know, pretty just hardworking family, bro. Mom and dad both worked, you know, dad was very traditional, um, very big into sports and, um, just in his ways, bro. And, and I think that was the start of the separation of them, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I started in a, in a, you know, both parent household and it ended up being living with my single parent mom and pretty much she raised me from the age of eight you know oh now there was no siblings other than yourself uh, i have a sister okay so yeah. but uh, about eight your father and your mom split father and mom split at eight do um, you do you remember how that conversation was with your mom at all because you were a young kid or was it just like just just a lot of liquor a lot of abuse oh. a lot of um a lot of things she was dealing with that we didn't know at a young age. Of course. You know, and um, the drinking just reflected into, you know, the the shit you do when you're drunk, bro. And that's abusive, not only verbally, but physically to her and yeah. to the kids, you know. And that's just how that, I guess, divorce happened. And it, right. And, and that was a better thing for you guys to, you know, go get away from that than be in that environment. Yeah, I mean sucks to say but sometimes yeah the, the the division is better bro so once you left uh once your parents got divorced was your mom i mean were you going back and visiting that a lot or was it did you start kind of just uh my your thing my mom was a very good woman bro she she understood the importance of having a father in your life okay and she never wanted to take us away from him the just the circumstances cause for that um, no child support, left the house, left the car, literally started fresh. Um, she did leave him for a black man, which caused a lot of confusion and a lot of problems for my relationship with my father because he pretty much made a decision. He, he made us made a decision like you either go live with your mom and this black dude or you stay with me and I'll teach you how to become a man. And at that point, when you're getting abused and when shit ain't going good, then you decide to go with the person you feel protected from right. or, or with, you know, and that was my mom. And when I made that decision, 
there was really no relationship with me and my father. You know, we lived three blocks away and didn't see each other for years, bro. You know? Now, did the the man that your mom was dating at the time, did they stay together a long time? Oh, bro, he pretty much was a part of, he was more of my dad in that time nice. of life than my dad, you know? Dope, dope. And it's crazy because my entire life I was taught that that race wasn't good. Right. You know, he's very Mexican, very traditional. And, you know, you could, you, you, everyone knows out there when I say that, like, when you, where you're taught not to like a certain thing, bro, there, it's not said in a good way. Yeah, it was a know? generational thing where people were looking at that. And even like uh, women dating black men back then was, oh, was it, it's frowned huge. upon. 1,000%. Yeah, nowadays it's nothing. No, matters, nothing, you know? nothing, which is a great thing. Yeah, which we is, we're out, we're, you know, we're, we're elevating and evolving and in a lot of ways. And then we're also declining in a lot of ways still, you know, and not everything's perfect, but things did get better in that sense. Hey, so what were you doing like around, let's say, 11 years old, homie? Were you a, a, a bicycle guy? Were you a skateboard guy? Were you a... Oh, homie, like w once my, my mom and dad got the divorce, dog, it was almost like a little bit of freedom because he was, uh, you know, hard up on, on sports. So I, I couldn't climb trees. I couldn't ride a rollerblade. I couldn't. He was one of them dads that I was, that his son was going to try to get his dream he wanted at all stakes. You know, so don't climb that tree. You're going to get hurt. Don't ride that skateboard. Break it in front of me. No playing with oh. friends because you're, you, you need to be a ball player. You're going to be a Dodger. And drinking, you're going to be a Dodger. And if you don't, if you miss that ground ball again, you're going to get hit with the oh, belt again. Like man. that type of stuff, you know. So it drives you away from the thing you loved in life at first, bro. It was sports. It was that's what so, every kid. So you were a baseball guy, baseball player. What, and when what, I got away from them, I started skateboarding and I started. What position were you playing in baseball at first? Middle infield, oh. shortstop, and second. Baby. Are you any good, baby? Oh, I got it. The MLB. I thought I was gonna be a doctor. You're, you're ready, homie. I was ready. That's a kid's dream, Ron. I dropped the documentary that shows that you know childhood part of my life. Like everybody aspires to be something. Do you believe? Like I do, as far as like some of these younger kids in in baseball and some of these higher league leagues that go and travel, like the first county and states, that they're burning out some of these young talents. In a sense, um, because it it becomes an addiction to the father yes. and the mother. You know, now it's like you're almost using your. It's like a cert. Like my son's better than you. He's gonna get further than you. We got a little bit more money. We can put it in the training and. Mm -hmm. You can't be a kid because they're sacrificing the childhood for his later years in life, you know? And it's a hard balance, bro, because I do have family that are super involved in, in baseball right now. And that's all they do. And it reminds me of me being a child. And you can't tell a parent they're doing it wrong because you love their, that they're so involved in the sport, but... They do need a childhood. I, I label those uh, parents little league losers. <laughs> and I say and I say that lovingly because I was once a little league loser. I would coach my my son and my daughter and then my all my nephews were playing. You know, so we were doing that every day at the park thing. I mean Yeah. But I I have seen even on my own family side, some like my cuñado sometimes they would play games and he's gotta leave, bro, because he's just He's getting all hot headed and oh yeah, he you, you end up you know throwing blows with a with a coach or an, you know well, another parent. Well, he would get his, his blood pressure rising about his kids, and I'd be like, "Fool, you never played good baseball. Like I knew you from teenager. Fool, you ain't you weren't that baseball player. Always, so why, why are you busting these kids' balls? Yeah. I mean, to me, I think it's a, a sport, especially. It's a great way for kids to you know express themselves, have fun, and be part of something positive. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think it's a great thing, bro. Like. It keeps you out of so much trouble. It yeah. keeps you in the right direction. It keeps you, like you said, staying in a positive route. I mean, I've had family and cousins that I looked up to that were amazing baseball players. And when I was a kid, they were playing baseball and then they got into the streets and then right. they started playing the gangbang sport. And right. that led them in a whole different path in life. Absolutely. You know, so I've been able to see it all around me. I just been able to navigate how to not be involved in that, but still be around it. And that's the hard part in this world. Right. No, we'll get to that in a second. Now you're you're off of the baseball thing. What are you doing? You skating now? I'm, I'm a, oh a skateboarder. I'm the guy in the knee, fool, going like this. I mean, I could <laughs> I could not skateboard for the life of me, brother. Okay, okay. So you so you were you were any good? 
Any Ollie? Yeah, any... no, nah, kickflip, Ollie, Vario, some, you know, ah, grinds, dale, a couple little, you know, I wasn't a big stair guy. I was always look at the stairs and be like, nah, bro, my leg's not going to work down there. What, what kind of board? Usually, maybe like a alien workshop or an independent or, or you know. The Caballeros and uh, yeah. they're, they're dope, bro. I, I definitely remember the boards. They were dope. Yeah. Oh, the graphics on that was, it was like tattooing before it got big. Yeah. You know what? You you're abs- me? Like, you're you, absolutely you, right. As a kid, you looked at them boards yeah, you're had looking at illustration that. and art and you were like, whoa. What was uh, the best trick that you landed and what was uh, the worst fucking eat you ever did eat shit on a board? Best trick I landed was a very old kickflip off like a three stair, which probably isn't that crazy well, to the pros. You yeah. Know, but at a young age, I was Heck dope. Yeah. You felt like you won the Super How Bowl. How many though. times you try it before you landed it? A million. You bail, 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 and then you just catch one, you know? Worst fall, and it wasn't even doing a trick, bro. It's just cruising on the skateboard. And all skateboarders know when this rock. happens, dog. <laughs> Either a little rock or an acorn just catches that wheel, and you're just cruising. You got the Walkman, and then you just, bro, you're done, homie. You almost want to quit skateboarding after that. Oh, I bet, bro. I bet you eat shit. I don't know about your mom. My mom would have been like, "That's otra pendejo." Like, dog, that you, you, yeah, that's your fault. This is what, what bro. What are you doing here? You know, come right. home crying, like, bro. Yeah. Okay, so now let's we're off the like the skateboard scene. Talk to me as you're going into your teenagehood and going into junior high because that's where a lot of young men, and as you saw it firsthand, start making the mistakes and start gravitating towards the gang life and, and the street life. So what were you like in eighth, ninth grade? That's where the smoking weed, that's where chilling with the homies, that's where riding raps that's where the girls that's where the temptation starts to hit every young man is in that age yes you know absolutely. and it hit me bro it, it all that that time i wasn't able to do nothing and you know on a very strict program bro it was like i let loose bro and i just i'd rather you know skateboard write rhymes smoke weed and party bro and that's like took me straight out of the sporting world you know so uh, when you're out there and, and you're a kid and, uh, you know, the first time you see somebody smoking weed, when was the first time they offered you some? It was about, I think I was about, well, I smoked my first hit of a joint at about 11. Ah, me too. So this was, yeah, <laughs> this was before I even got into that, you know. Did you get that nice uh, Mexican dirt weed on me? It was brown as <laughs> shit, bro. Hey, folks don't know how spoiled they are right now with the butt they get, bro. Dog, it, it nowadays, homie, you better be prepared to smoke the weed out now because it's yeah. way different. Yeah, bro. for sure, for sure. It's way different. But yeah, bro, the homie found it, you know, in his in his aunt's little drawer and take the little, you know, pipe, mostly that metal little weird old <laughs> pipe, you know, and then <laughs> hit it and then you're just in cuckoo land. <laughs> Do you end up uh, graduating from high school? Yeah, it it uh, it took me a lot though, bro. I I had to go to night school. I had to go to um a lot of different things to graduate. Now, what what was going on that was stopping you from graduating in your life? Attendance, um, just just failing classes. What were you doing? Just partying, ditching, doing that, or yeah, just like just not caring. No, no, you weren't doing sports or anything at that time. Nah, it was full blown, just selling a little weed and. And partying, bro, and then checking and, and checking out females. Uh, how was the how was the gang scene in high school? You know, in my particular high school, it it wasn't super big. So so what people don't understand about the SGV is that Covina is a is a city that isn't claimed by a hood. Okay. So you have West Covina, you have Baldwin Park, La Puente, Azusa, Bassett. I mean, Laver, everywhere around Covina, literally in a circle, is surrounded by gang territory. Right. Right. No one has claimed Covina. So as a kid, you can you can migrate through there and be a little bit okay. No, no real big influence, you know? Now, if you veer off and go into some parties and hang out with the, you, you know, it's, you can get caught up in that for sure. But that was the one thing that kept me out of a hood was the city I lived in and an older cousin that, that had I grew up with. I almost actually attended a Covina High. That's what it is, right? It's yeah. Covina. Yeah, my uh my aunt lived out there 
my mom was trying to get me out the city over here because I was acting a fool yeah. and no schools would really take me. And then I, I went over there and they ran the file like, no, we don't want you over. coming over here. <laughs> coming over here, homie. But uh, yeah, I could I could have been one of your homies back then, carnal. Man, homie. <laughs> but now we're homies now. That's right, homie. But you know what's crazy is is it's for some reason that divorce. Now that I think back, and knowing my pops lived three blocks away, as as we're talking about this, I'm thinking it, it had some effect on me in weird ways because I got expelled from elementary. Okay. I got kicked out and expelled from high school. So I was always in trouble. Now, what the hell did you do to get expelled from elementary? My sister was walking with her friend to the liquor store, and these pe- the, the, a few girls and a few fools jumped my sister and her homegirl. So my stepdad has some crazy ass you know like female little nieces dog oh, from long beach you right. know what i'm saying so he made a call to the girls and then we just planned it out and just caught them right outside of school bro and we just we 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 gave them back what they gave you know what i'm saying and we put hands on them and i went to to elementary school that next day and the cops were there waiting and escorted me home bro and oh, it was wow. like crazy bro because it was like i was in fifth grade dog. yeah you're a little kid bro I was in fifth grade, bro, but there was just a lot of things probably that I was experiencing that I didn't realize then, you know? Right. That was the environment you were living at the time. So after, so in order to graduate high school, you had to go to night school? What did you have to do? What what hoops did you have to go through? Just a lot of night school, bro. A lot of extra, you know, stuff at school, you know, getting in with the teachers the best you could, doing, you know, scorekeeping for, for wrestling matches on the weekend, doing Saturday, like going through hoops bro like and that's something you know my mom wasn't very strict but it was like i needed to graduate bro you know well that's that's what i was gonna say next because a lot of people in your position wouldn't care they're like you know what i don't give a shit you know you're in that mentality but there must have been something that was behind you pushing you to graduate so was that your mom you think yeah i would assume bro i mean i'm not a dumbass so like i knew i was messing up and i knew like that was something to be proud of absolutely it really was bro and and um a lot of people took that for granted that didn't get to, you know, graduate and things like that. So I knew the college thing and the school thing wasn't my route, but at least I could say, bro, I went to I went to high school and I and I graduated and I got my, you know, my little high school diploma and and let me figure it out from there, you know? No, that that's a just a great stepping stone to start off with. Just it's it's crazy that the statistics that say just graduating high school will like make you succeed like three times more than somebody who doesn't have that diploma. Wow. I didn't know that. So you graduate high school. What is Tone doing after high school? Right out of high school. I So in my senior year, my uh, my older cousin was into the music business. And, and um, he was already doing music with, with like Snoop and Too Short and, you know, the East Siders and, and a lot of, okay. you know, bigger, bigger musicians at that time. And he would pull me out of school and take me to the video. So I have, was I was already knowing i wanted to do music so oh. you know i was in a in a band in high school you know kind of like a i was rapping over a band and we were doing house you know parties what was the name of the band defy and deny defy and deny okay yeah all right um big shows bro we won multiple you know talent shows multiple battle of the bands i mean we we performed at some really dope venues as a young younger head bro and it just that's what was my passion bro Talking about talent shows a little bit because you brought that up. Let me give me your your uh, opinion on this. We we do a a segment here on American Cholo that we bring people out and we want them to do at least a minimum of sixty seconds on the mic, right? Yeah. Whether it's singing, whether it's rapping. The only thing that I've been having an issue with, and I'm telling people, no voiceovers on me. I don't want you're not gonna get voiceovers over here. We're not gonna let you lip sync. We're not gonna let you do voiceovers. And the reason I say this is because. If you can't give me 60 seconds, are you going to be a performer? You, you, you're not. But here's the thing, though. In this generation, the biggest, the most sought-out artists are pretty much doing karaoke. Right. Right. You see young, they, they don't even need to, to rap. They just put the mic up. It's their song in the bed. They're dancing. They're yes, dancers. Yes, you know? yes. With an exception of amazing artists, there is artists out there that, don't do that. And what you see, what you hear is what you get. But don't you, know? you believe that's that even the guys who are at that level where they're lip singing, they have to still start off 
being able to perform live or something. Because I, I don't think they're gonna just lip sync off the top. You're gonna you're gonna perform live to show somebody what you got. Not in all, not not in every case. Really, simply because the internet nowadays can give you instant stardom and instant viral. Right. That no one even you don't need to prove to nothing no more. You already like the song without even seeing me. Mm. So now you go to the show because you heard the song on TikTok or heard the song on Instagram or heard your homie. And now you're just going to just go. So you don't care how he sounds. You just you're in the building. So you didn't really become a fan off of his raw talent. You became it off of just something you heard just But you there's know? there's some performers that that I that are big performers that I've seen like on on TV and they're live and they sound horrible. I'm like, man, you know, it's it's more more of those than than they're than, not right. Yeah, bro. It's but the guys who are doing it like when they're on um, on a major radio station, they're freestyling. They're to me like, dude, that's talent. Yeah. That that I, I I to me it separates the people who are really investing because sixty seconds is a long time when you're doing a fight and when you're maybe doing a song like that. But 60 seconds really isn't that much time. I mean, somebody should be able to practice enough for, hey, man, I should be able to remember 60 seconds versus. Well, well bro, the, the thing is, is if you know you're going to go on a show like that, you, if you're not preparing for it and you know that's your job for that day, then you don't love what you do. Mm, there you go. You get me? It's yeah, This is like, sure. that means you're just, this is a game to you, homie. And, this is a game. Th and that's kind of what I try to tell them. And I try to school them in the right way. I'm like, listen, man, what's going to happen if you're walking down the street and somebody sees your, your Instagram and then, hey, a so-so big-time producer just hit me. He say, come over to the studio. He wants to hear you. And then you get to the studio and you're freezing up. Yeah. And there's different, pro like, not everything has to be, uh, but you have to be able to create in the moment. Yes. You know, like, you don't have really, really, the only big records that are even making the number one charge bro are not freestyle the records. Yeah, we of know course. that. Yeah, they're of course. written and they're produced and they're in the studio creating. So, like, you have to know how to create. But there is a back, you know, there is a flip side to that. It's like, bro, if you're a rapper, Everyone treats you like you're a circus animal. Like they, it's like they always want you do this right now on the spot. Right? And it's like a lot of artists feel a way about that too. You know what right. I'm saying? Because it's like, homie, like, like I'm not just a, a circus animal, dog. Like this, like uh, I could go, you know? Yeah, no, I get that. If somebody's sitting here, like, hey, freestyle to me. No, we schedule it in advance. We do the whole promo. Hey, dude, this is what we're going to do. We're we'll doing a 60-second clip. This is what you're going to do. And to me, it's just like practice. But I noticed too that – when they come in here and they see all this, bro, and, you know, they're seeing all these cameras, and I had one come in here, uh, and she was like, dude, I'm nervous. And it was cool, though. I was like, dude, you got nothing to be nervous. Said, Look at all these lights. Look at all these cameras. I didn't think I was going to be this nervous. I said, yeah, but now imagine if you're on the Tonight Show, yeah. and you got so many people watching you. I said, this is this is how it begins, and you got, you got to get used to being in front of the camera, in front of the people, and you got to be able to at least perform. I mean, at least that's my opinion on it. Yeah, but you know, I'm just a consumer, homeboy. I'm not I mean, nah, bro, you're you're absolutely right, and I think everyone starts somewhere. Like, if you're not nervous, then you really don't care about what you're doing, right? Because when you first started a podcast, it. I'm sure it was very, you know. Yes. You, 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 everything is supposed to be like the first time you're doing it nervous. Bro. Yes, of course. Of you, course. You, you, because you care. Yeah. It's the fools that come in and uh, this is, and then they, now they look stupid because they didn't prepare. <laughs> you're right. They didn't perform right, bro. And now you just made yourself look like a goofball, you know? Now, was there any time that you were performing that you just felt like a goofball? Like, <sighs> bro, I performed in front of one person. I performed in front of five people. I performed in front of 500 and 5,000, you know, every, every show is different, but the same, because if you love what you do, that one person you're rapping for, bro, you could change that man's life, that woman's life. That's so right. if you don't put it all out there, that person's not going to go home and go, homie, I just saw this dude at the bar. No one was there, but he was dope. His name is whoop de whoop you know, and then they start looking you up. Right. And press that one person that's watching. Right. Yeah, because there's, there's many that would say, oh, man, there's only one guy out there. I'm not. Oh, bro, I've I traveled with my cousin Texas all through New Mexico. I mean, we we. Uh, so you everywhere. were on the tour with them, huh? I've been I've been on on some tours, bro. You know, a lot of cities, a lot of states, a lot of days, and and um, it's it's been a you know good experience. Been roller coasters. It's a it's a whole nother life, you know. 
How how is that life? You like you take off and you you go to different different cities every other day or how? Some cities you're there two days. Some cities you're there eight hours. Most of the time you're there eight hours for the show, and then the minute you're done with the show at midnight or one, bro, you're in a bus and you're traveling thirteen hours to another state. Ooh. You know, and then you wake, you get there, you shower, boom, go to a sound check, do it again, and so it's it's very exhausting i bet but bro. amazing at the same time because you're seeing different people different cultures you're touching different fans you're getting new awareness it's it's a beautiful but tiring thing i i bet uh which was one of the like um uh, one of the most energetic cities that you went to denver was actually really dope for really me. It, it was i never been there and this the 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 venue and the scene was was really really Active and really dope, bro. They were they were with it out there, bro. So they're good fans. Yeah, LA fans are tough, bro. LA fans are too cool for school, fool. Oh, I know, right? I uh, dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. You pull up footage, you know, in the eighties, nineties of a of a rap or rock or whatever show. Yeah. Different energy, yes. homie. Yes, I agree. I because agree. nowadays it's this. Oh, I see. And it's and it's just you. You feel like you have to be somebody. You, music's supposed to you. You're supposed to be in another world. I saw that this weekend. They had, I think, it was a night of a black skin. What they okay. had right at at Commerce. Okay. Um, and it was beautiful, dude. Dope. Uh, deep, deep as hell. Everybody was packed in that place, right? Gotcha. But when I'm seeing the concert, everybody, bro, on live, every, I'm like. I could, I could see get a storyline, but no, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about full blown live, the whole concert, just why I'm like, damn, it's, it's like you're not even enjoying it. You're as much not as, there. Right. You know, you're not there. I, like you said, there's moments where you need to remember, you know, have a little footage of, you know, like when I'm going to come in, I'm going to take some footage. I don't want to. I don't want to forget that moment. Yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be like you're just on live yeah, right here and talking to me. and you're Yeah, you know, bro. Because there's there's time and place for everything. Yeah. There's even know? people that go live at weddings, bro. Oh, <laughs> Hey, that was for about 15 minutes out of a seven-hour wedding. That was all right. Shout out to oh, Rocky man. and his new wife, man. Yeah, what a beautiful mo like time, bro. You were there. We shared a good moment, bro, and that's what life's about. Yeah, brother. I We didn't talk that day because I told you I don't want to talk to you for what. I don't want to lose any conversation. Yeah. We knew you were already coming. Yeah. And, yeah, when we, when we left, uh, my wife and I, right, uh, she was like, dude, that was so beautiful. She was like, you looked around and, you know, you had – the gangster crowd, you had the, you know, the 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 regular guys, you had the business guys, you had the female. It was yeah. just a bunch of different genres of people, but all in a positive way, all there. With, it was just an energy of love and, and family, yeah, bro. Yeah, you're there for one reason. Right. And it's to celebrate. Yes. Somebody's new life. Yes, exactly. You know, and new journey. Exactly, And if bro. you make that about yourself or you start issues or you, you know, start... You shouldn't be there, dog. Right, know? right. And no, it was dope, bro. It, yeah. it it was dope. Uh, I think they're out on uh, their honeymoon, man. Hopefully, they're not going. To, I was supposed to be going to Mammoth tomorrow for what? Oh, really? Yeah, not no more. I never been. Oh, bro, you ever been to uh, Big Bear? Yeah. But Imagine Big Bear on steroids, and I mean major steroids, bro. I need to go. Oh, it is. I've only been to the snow like once in my life. No, bro. You Mammoth is like the the TV shows you see where just it's. Beautiful banks of snow everywhere. Postcard. Postcard, bro. Postcard. Yeah, we're supposed to take off tomorrow morning. And what's what happened? Fucking blizzard gonna go on over there, bro. <laughs> is, it, is the blizzard supposed to come tomorrow night and uh go all the way through Sunday? So if I would go there, I'm stuck. Stuck. I'm stuck. And, and you're gonna be stuck in the in the in the Airbnb. In the, yeah, you're not doing that. And the, the 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 town is closed. Got you. Okay. No, but you definitely need to go over there. I believe that uh Mammoth, they they ski all the way up to Memorial Day. Bro. So do you ski? I ski, bro. Oh. I'm the skiing cholo, homeboy. Okay, fool. I'm the skiing cholo. I, I was gonna have my GoPro and everything because people oh. don't believe me. Cause I, I get out of my realm of comfort. And that one was uh, my brother, rest in peace, Chris. He's the one that, that took me skiing years ago, bro. He took me and his uh, brother-in-law, we call loser, right? And my brother said this, and it was a perfect example of how to tell you how to ski. It's like, listen, bro, you're going to hate this thing for an hour. You're going to say, fuck this. This is bullshit. You're going to kick these skis yeah, off. You're going to, yeah, you're going to hate it. Once you get it, bro, you're going to love it, right? And what this jackass asshole did, shout out to my brother. He takes us to a place. He takes us to like one of the hardest things, fool. 
Oh, like the steepest. Oh, <laughs> we didn't know. Man. We had no clue. <laughs> it's yeah. one of those that you can't even climb up the hill no more. You're stuck. Oh, so, gotcha. And I'm like, bro, really? He's like, yeah, bro. That way, it's going to take you all this time to get down the hill. By the time you get down the hill, you're going to fucking know how to ski. That's smart, bro. That's actually <laughs> genius, dog. <laughs> so we went, and sure enough, bro, I was like, this is bullshit, bro. And then once you ski, the, the best way to put it, imagine skiing. You know when you're a kid? You got socks on and you're doing the risky oh, business. One. Yes. Yes. Okay. Imagine that, but you don't stop for 400 yards, 500 yards. Damn. You're just so that wind. Oh, that bro, wind. that yeah, that wind. It's the, freedom. Yeah, it's freedom, bro. It's freedom. Except when you don't really know how to stop, you gotta kind of jump yeah. sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I see a lot of people getting all messed up on that. Yeah, on no, snow, bro. Because, you, we, and, you know, from the outside, you're like, oh, that snow don't hurt. It's just Oh, puffy, no, no, bro. it like, does, bro. It does. And and if that doesn't work, uh, we go with the, um, with the snowmobiles out there in Mammoth. Ooh, oh, it's fun. That's something I can mess with, bro. Oh, it, it's a blast, bro. It's exactly how a sea do is in water. Yeah. But you're on the snow. Oh, we went, and there's no sharks. That, there's no sharks, homie. Sure. <laughs> okay, all right. But yeah, definitely. So, so mammoth got canceled, homie. But hey, I'm still here. I'm still hey. enjoying it. So back to you, uh, Long Beach. Uh, your your cousin, you said, was really involved in the in the rap scene out there, or well, with my, the rappers out there. So my my older cousin, uh, you know, from a neighborhood out out in L.A., and that's who was very much so my influence. When I when when I was on my own without my father, okay, you know, looking up to a, a older cousin, I got a song called Big Cousin. You know what I'm saying? Nice. And wrote an entire song about this this guy. You know, and um, his lifestyle was just so intriguing. You know, it was women, it was money, it was hanging out with stars, it was doing anything he wanted: Havasu, big boats, glamis, big trucks you know, jewelry. And it was just like, whoa, like that's what really got me into the music scene. You said, I want that. Yeah. And I had already been doing music. So I was able to start writing music for his homies. Okay. So and you were then, post writing. And then he would pay me a couple bucks and then I would start clicking in my head. Like you could make money from writing. Right. Now you go, Oh, okay. You're starting to open your eyes to the hustle. Oh, okay. All right, so I could do something I love and still make money at it. Right. And that's what really, really gave me the motivation to want to become that. And when uh, when did you actually perform your first song on a video? It was, so me and my cousin created a group. Um, and uh, we uh, actually did a major deal right out of high school to Warner Brothers. Oh, shit. Um, and uh, we signed like a major label deal. Nice. So he was using, you know, his street money and and cleaning it up. Right. And that was the best way to do that. You know, real estate, it goes real estate into the record label. Now it's washed. So we were able to create a group, create a label, and we started really shooting music videos around that time when I was about 18 years old. You're a young pup. Oh, in the game, bro. That's right. Yeah. Um. Well, did you always have the name High Tone, or was there a different name? When back I was then? in the group, I had a name. Uh, my name was T Money. T Money. Tony is my real name, okay. and then, you know it was T Money. You okay. know what I'm saying? And, and uh, it switched when the group dismantled, and my cousin started doing behind the scenes stuff, and I went solo in my music career. I was sitting back, going, T Money. Just it was a. It sounds really young. Right. It's like, what does that even mean? Like, you know, like to me, like, cool, you're Tony and you like money. Okay, cool. Like, <laughs> didn't really click, you know? Right. And I'm sitting down with my girl and we were watching La Bamba and the word, the name High Tone came up. He says, they call me High Tone. Who was the one they called High Tone in La Bamba? So Richie walked into the garage and they're like, what do they call you? And Casey says, High Tone. Oh, right? Okay. My last name is the same as Richie Valenzuela. Andale. And we have the same birthday. Wow, really? So I was sitting here going, bro. Oh, shit, okay. This is a perfect name. Okay, yeah, for right? sure. Yes, yeah. And as I was starting the career and, and I started using that name, which was dope, was Bob's daughter from Richie's yeah, brother. The real. They, they hit me up on, on social media. Really? And they said, hey, they said, 
we appreciate you carrying on the legacy. That's dope. And they bro. gave me the respect because they knew all the common things we had, you know? Right, right. Southern California, Mexican American, birthday, last name. Dang. And it was like, if we wanted anybody to do that, and they, I'm, I'm, I'm talking in a positive way, my music's very much so dreams, positive hustle. You could do it. I could do it. Hard work pays off. They loved it. They gave you their blessings. 1,000%. How did that feel, bro? Uh, bro, I, that was my fa my favorite movie as a kid. Really? You know, That's I got, right. I got, I got Richie Valens tatted on me. It was just a huge, like, like surreal moment, bro. You know? For sure. Echoes World, 999 Super Chat, late, but I'm here with the popcorn. That's what's up. Echoes World, the man behind the camera, carnal. Echo, echo, echo. I know Echo, bro. <laughs> you know he's echo. he's a, a really dope man. Bro. Oh, professional, bro. Man. Major professional, carnal. Man. Somebody I've, seen, I've seen him grow, bro, and that's a, that's a you know. Well, that's the beauty of, of right now just our in this generation. It seems like the generation now... As far as Latino, Chicano, Cali Mac, whatever you want to call it, is really starting to blossom, bro. It seems like we're really starting to blossom, whether it's in the music industry, whether it's in acting, whether it's in podcasting, videography, and all that good stuff. You don't see that growth? Oh, bro. This wasn't happening. Right? Not even five, ten years ago. Like, you see this. For sure. Crazy incline. For sure. Of our culture really Doing things to succeed in generational wealth. You yes. Know? That's yes. the thing. It's setting up for what's now going to come later. Absolutely, brother. You know, and we're getting our shot. We're getting our opportunity. So I think right now is a big, we have to support. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Know? And it doesn't mean that there's not going to be, you're not going to have any issue. You're not going to have any, you know, things that you, you might not, you might disagree here, might agree here. But at the end of the day, we want us to elevate. Yeah, but that's one thing with our people, bro. It's it's hard for us to a lot of times just disagree and, and disagree in a way where we say we just agree to this. We'll agree to disagree on this situation, but let's move forward. It, I mean, we're the kind of people that, you know, we're fighting over a girl from 50 years ago or 60 yeah. years ago that, you know, two it's, homies. It's an ego thing. It's it's, it's like especially our culture, bro. It's very macho. Yes. It's very just no, it's my way or the highway. And I feel like. It's going to take, you know, the older heads or the influencers right now to be like, homie, like that don't even matter. Right. If we keep mess, if we keep, you know, having problems over that little thing, wait till something big happens. Yes. Fool. That's that's peanuts you want to fight over, bro. Like, like, bro, what are we talking about here? Yeah, I, I've seen that. And I've gotten into like my own little issue. People are like, bro, we're we're fighting at this level right now. Like, what if we were blowing up and really doing something? You know, then I could see somebody, hey, man, you're making some millions, you're doing some big moves, and no, nah, do you fighting over fucking nothing? Nothing, brother. Yeah. Now, have you always been this kind of guy with energy, or did you also ever have like ego problems and uh, the machismo problems? Nah, bro. I, I mean, thank God, bro. I've just been able to carry myself very much so. If it isn't affecting me, I don't give a fuck because. Being an artist, bro, and being an entrepreneur and being someone with dreams, like, I feel like a very big, big, big thing to have as you're chasing these things is learning how to react to things. Oh, yes. And learning how to say, that didn't affect me, so I don't even need to really even jump mm. into that. You know, mm. like, the more you, the more you stay out of bullshit. The, the faster you're going to get to where you want to be. Oh man, you you are so right, bro. You are so right. There's I mean, now I don't I don't get so much in the mud as before when I first started. Yeah, I definitely was and I you know when people say do you regret certain that's yeah, of course I regret certain things and I would have done them differently, but that's what growth is when you can see that. When you can see, "Hey, I made this mistake. I'm not going to do it again." And it's a uh, it's sweating the small things, homie. It's sweating the small things. Uh, Young Duff has that a song called Rain. He said, you know, they the when you're doing big things, that's what that's what they're supposed to. They're supposed to hate. I mean, like, yeah. don't sweat the small shit. That's it. Because yeah. if they're not hating, you're not doing nothing right. You know, that's the main thing. Like, and just people need to learn that, bro. Like, the reading the comments and commenting on this, and it's like, homie, the the energy you're spending yes. fighting with someone you don't even know or might not even ever run into is something you could have been doing to elevate your family, yourself, your business, your dreams. Yes. Like, it's like, homie, let's put the energy where it needs to be, not where it where where you think it should be. Yeah, the comment section, I I that's 
there's levels to it. And the comment section is one thing I've left behind, I don't know, maybe a year ago or something. Gotcha. Like, yeah, every, but you you had to learn that, though, right? I, I definitely gotcha. had to learn. I definitely had to learn that. And I always, when I say that about the comment section, I got to give a shout out to G. Lou. He's a brother, right? Uh, that came on the show, and, uh, and, and I, we, we mess with each other as far as podcasts go, right? He told me one time, and he actually was at my house, and we, were, we did a show with Bozo, and we were in the backyard, you know, smoking some bud. And he's like, Gil, you are the king of pettiness, mm-hmm. Right? And I said, yeah, I know. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go back and forth with you. I'll, yeah. I'm going to go on a thread and argue with you back and forth. He's like, this is what you need to understand, Gil. You in the game, homie. You are a player in the game. They're in the sidelines screaming at you and you're answering them. I said, you know, I, that, that's it. That's the, that guy got game, homie. Yeah, brother. I said, you know what, Gil? You're absolutely right, bro. He's like, they want you to go back and forth with them. They want you. They want your attention. Because there are some guys that talk shit and I go back. Oh, but I just wanted you to respond to me. You know, and I was like, "Yeah, dude, you're not gonna walk on the on a basketball court and go scream at everybody who's screaming." At them. Yeah, you no, know, right. you came to watch me, baby. You came to watch me yeah. play. So you're the star. Yeah, you're the star of the show. Keep it going, brother. But it's easier said than done. But that's what separates the professionals from the ones that can't level up. There you go. Because as a professional, you have to be able to. Man, Get, get out of here with that. Yeah, it, it's if, not affecting me. It's exactly. If somebody's in front of my house screaming, yeah, of course. But of course. If, if somebody's on the internet, oh, you're a punk. Oh, you're the... I'm the you, you have to stay there for, for 365 days a year just fucking... Oh, yeah, bro. You're going to waste a lot of life doing that, bro. <laughs> but, yeah. I, but I think that's an issue that we have in our community that it's just the, the small stuff. Let me, let me get this real quick. 999 Super Chat. Milton, appreciate that, my man. Dope interview. Dope boy Tony opened up for him and Drummer Boy at the Roxy. That's not too shabby. Oh. Yeah, uh, uh, Doughboy Tony is a part of the podcast over here. He comes in. He's got What's the Word with a couple other fellas from Orange County. Nice. Jessica, $10 Super Chat. Salute, Gil. Appreciate you. Much respect from the Hater World family. That's right. We team Blue Devil over here, homie. Two chat for Blue Devil, <laughs> homie. That's what you talk about get into it. Blue Devil got more wars in America, fool. <laughs> oh, shit. So, you're when you guys broke up as a group, how many was it in that group you it, guys had? Me and my cousin. It was just in your cousin. Yeah. Now, was it financial? Did you guys get into an argument? It was the label's decision. So, with the label, you you if you sign a major label, you normally have multiple multiple acts. What what are what do those contracts look like with the with the labels? Do they like front you money up front? Do they like how how does it, that? It could be a, a numerous ways of doing it, but yeah, there's normally an advance. Okay, which all advances you have to pay back. That's that's what I was going that's to. That's what next. people don't. Know. Oh, I got a million dollar deal. Well, bro, you didn't go buy a million dollar home. Maybe you 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 could do what you want with your money, right. but this is going to be in your recoup, which means. Anything they spend on your album, you're it's it's a debt. So it's it's just it's a line of credit. It's a line of credit. Ooh, okay. And they're banking on you. The bigger advance or the bigger the deal is, the more they're banking on you to blow. But they're gonna invest in you to try to blow up. They're That's it. And they believe this. in you. Okay. You know they believe in you. All so right. If someone's giving you a large amount of money up front, probably some game right here. Then they're they believe in you. Okay, so when people get those, yeah, because I've hear, I mean, I've heard it on documentaries. I've heard this, like, I got this advance, but then when he came, like how Tupac, I think Tupac got done real dirty when he, he wanted to take off a death row, and then uh, Suge Knight put out the books, like, oh, you owe me this, you owe me this, this you owe this, all the this. houses you've been living in, all the cars you've been, so at the end, you owe me 300 grand, like, crazy, bro. Yeah, it's that, crazy. But but when you're young, and you came from nothing, yes. and someone gives you 100,000, Bro, buy you, ten you, grand nowadays. Homie, like, you're, you're, you made it. Yeah, you, you're rich. You, yeah, people think that you can live off of that for the rest of your life, bro. And that ain't the case. That is not the case. That's not the case. Man, that's that's some great schooling because yeah, unfortunately, uh, too many young guys. Well, they probably can't even afford an attorney at that point to be like, hey, yeah. So it's 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 the the reason why the the label deal didn't work was simply because the first artist that we agreed with putting out. It wasn't working out. So a label's pretty much going to go, well, this isn't working. Well, the guys behind them isn't going to work either. So let's just close out this deal. They take out the whole team. And let's just shelf it and call it a loss. Like That's that. it. Yeah, they got so much money. It's that. It's that. Right. Like, why just keep feeding something that isn't going to work rather than cut ties with it and know, all right, we'll work on something hey. else and get it back over Hey, here. we tried. That's it. 
So when that happened, it left me as, as a young kid, like not making no money and trying to figure out if I'm going to continue music on me, how am I going to make money? Did it take the wind out of your sail for a little bit once they said, Hey, that's it. We're- yeah. I mean, I might, the car was being paid for. I was getting per diem for rent. Oh, so I you, you were living a, a good, comfortable life with the contract for a minute. Saying, All oh right, yeah. I, I got a contract. Yeah. I was, I was actually living a, 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 a dream. Right. I'm a, I'm okay. a young kid that has his little bills paid. You know, he's getting to travel. He gets to record. He gets to smoke weed all day. He gets to eat what he wants. Like, and then boom, it's gone. Oof. Now I'm sitting here going, what am I going to do to create music now? And that's where the kicker comes because I'm sitting here. Now I go back to what I used to know. I'm going to go and get a couple ounces. Mm. I'm going to start just making a couple bucks on the streets and then I could go to the studio. I was never a good seller because I would like to use it. <laughs> you know, it just it didn't work out for me. That wasn't my business. You and you me know? both, bro. You and me both. It wasn't like I could never, it, bro, it was either break even or now I owe you money. You're the guy you know? selling bud to buy bud. Homie. Like, I get yeah, it. I get just, it homie. Selling the bud to smoke the yeah, bud. Yeah, you know? recall for that. Yeah, so... <laughs> I feel, I already knew, dog. I, I'm I, I ain't a good dope seller, homie. That's out. So, <laughs> luckily, I got a call, and I had a lot of family and best friends in the tattoo business. Okay. So this is where the transition really happened, simply because I got a random phone call, and they said, "Hey, the homie that's shop managing is going to." He broke his jaw. He got into some, you know, some beef. And right. he broke his jaw, which means you can't answer phone calls. He broke it or somebody broke it for him. Someone broke it for him. <laughs> yeah, go. exactly. <laughs> uh, hey, he can't answer phone calls. He can't talk to cu- customers coming in. He, he can't up. communicate at all. Ugh. Hey, homie, if you want to make a couple bucks, come take over his position till he gets better. Well, when you're walking into a well-known, world-famous shop, the the shop manager and the helper broke sometimes leaves with more money than the artist because I'm getting a percentage from eight people. Oh, man. So if you give me 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, I'm leaving home with a couple hundos. I'm making money now. Yeah, for sure. And you're not even I'm not doing pen, nothing. nothing. I'm I'm cleaning toilets, mopping. I'm doing the dirty work. Yeah, but you're taking the phone call. You're, you're, you're like being the, the guy working in there, scheduling everything. I'm, right? the, I'm the bitch of the shop okay. at, at the moment. All you right. know what I'm saying? You're in the bottom of the totem pole, but you got to pay your dues. And yes, while sir. I was doing that, you know, the homies in the shop were like, homie, if you're going to be here and you, you feel like you want to do your music, you should learn how to tattoo. We'll teach you how to tattoo. They put me on game. They could have just let me continue. Yeah, to sleep if they didn't give me. a shit about you. Yeah, they wouldn't you know? stay at the And they're bottom. like, dog, you're here 12 hours a day, homie. All you got to do is watch, ask questions. You're already setting the machine up. Oh, you're already cool. setting my station up. You're already pricing them. You know everything about the. All you don't know how to do is put it in the skin. So learn. For the next three years, dog, you're not going to do nothing else but learn how to tap. Now, who was the main mentor at that shop for you at the time? It was probably, I mean, it was, it was, it was everybody, but it was, it was the owner, which was Brian Gonzalez. And then obviously Tommy Montoya was like, Tommy. was my, one of my best friends at the time. And he put me on a lot of game, bro. I would drive into work with him. I would leave work with him. Like it was every single day clock. That's love, brother. Love. That's major Put me love. on his, you know, and my cousin Bobby Cerna was working there as well. And he was kind of just coming up too. So was learning from the OG. I've seen guys do that, but. Not too many will hang. Yeah. And that's the problem with that happens that some of the mentors start kind of giving up because for any of us to, in order to elevate, we need mentors, brother. And unfortunately, there's a lot of guys who burn the mentors and the mentors eventually become the guy like, fuck these young guys. Yeah, I ain't helping nobody. Yeah, bro. I'm I'm tired of helping these guys. Yeah, fuck them. Or 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 they'll start learning a little bit after that. Go tell them to go fuck yourself. Like, you know? Yeah, it's just, it's respect. It's respect, At the end of the day, dog, about anything. So- who was the first person you ever tattooed? Do you remember? So in a shop, so two different. So the well, you're learning. You're tatting at the crib, the pad in the kitchen, and you're anybody. You're, you're tatting it. What 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 my what my mentors would tell me was, find one homie. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> one that's gonna let you run up his leg, because oh. you'd rather have one homie with a hundred of your first tats than a hundred people out there. Ah, so he, they gave me a different route. 
like, all right. And I had a a, a good homie uh, jump um, and Jay, and he's a tattoo artist now. And, and I was able to bless him with an opportunity after he gave me his skin. You know, now he's a great artist, you know, making money, making doctor money, you know? Dope. So we simply just sat at the crib, but I remember my first tat at the shop. Okay. And I fucked up really bad, bro. <laughs> I thought I did an amazing job. <laughs> You're one of those guys you see on Instagram oh, with the <laughs> dog. No. What, what was it? Bro? It was like he he would he would like to get like like the 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 Disney care so like Pluto uh fucking you know Mickey, Mickey right, whatever. Whole... So I thought it looked great, but the problem was when he came back from the healing, it looked like I got a torch and just torched his arm, oh. homie. Like it was like indented in it like there was no bringing this back and he paid me and with that money i went to the studio so the money's gone right he ain't gonna come back and ask for money you know but he and it's just a learning experience what, so what he came back and said what the f and it was a shop friend so everyone knew him he would been so he was cool about it it wasn't some fool off the street that wanted to but he knew anything. that was your first one he, he knew. He knew. He knew. He knew what in he was the going shop, in. Bro, and, and dog, here's the thing, bro. When you're at a shop and this your first tat, not only are you you're already oh, scared. Oh yes. You have the homies yeah. throwing things at you, pull <laughs> and coming up, bumping you. And dog, it, they're just they're being dicks. Yeah, yeah, of course. They're riding you, fool. They're, they're riding. Gonna, can you are, are you ready for this? Can you do this? If not, you're gonna leave. It's like right here, fool. 60 seconds running. Let's, huh? <laughs> let's see if you can rap or not. Shit. <laughs> That's how they did me. So uh, after he came, when when he walked in, when he left, he first, had to go it, to the hospital, it, it, dog. Oh shit! And get why, antibiotics. Why was that? What did you do? Because you, you, you went too deep. It, you dig him out so bad that it causes an infection. How'd you feel about that? Did you go home all fucking. I like, was. Uh, the, I you was so bummed, right? fucking discouraged, dog. Like that's that moment that's either gonna make you or break you. Yes. And we all have that. Podcast, acting, Absolutely, music, brother. tatting, what engineering, fucking haircutting, salon, nails, whatever. You're going to reach a a, a a point where either it makes you or breaks you. And I just said, bro, I didn't come all this way. And I have a dream of doing music. And this is my only way to get it. This is my pathway to success. And I just kept doing it. And he, and I even tatted him again. Oh, nice. He let he's, me tat yeah, him again. he's a good guy, homie. And they got a little better. Did they, a little did better. They, how did they fix the hand? Did they cover him? They, well, they give you antibiotics, give you cream, and then eventually it, it's... We're, we no, got, but did you go back in... Did, yeah, did, but you got to wait a while because that skin is so damaged that you think it's, it's, it's like cool on top, but underneath, the minute you hit that needle, it's bleeding underneath. So would you say that was the worst tattoo you ever did? On him? By far. How worst, about, maybe worst ever. How about the guy with the leg? How's, his, how's he walking around? The leg yeah, the his leg actually looks dope. <laughs> For some reason, I think it was the nerves. Yeah, because you were at home. He's your homie. You've probably done him a couple times. Like, Bro, his leg, you would think a, 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 a mediocre, like, seasoned tattoo artist did it. Really? Now, what? this guy, I, went, I tried to be so perfect that I messed uh, up. What's the hardest kind of tattoo? Well, first of all, no. What do you specialize in tattooing? Black and gray realistic. Black I came from Ink Slingers and that they they were they bred people to be black and gray realistic tattooers. And when you say realistic, you mean like portraits? Anything mean... real. If you want a flower, it's real. Ah. If you want a footprint, it's real. If you want a portrait, it's real. Okay. So Anything real. That that's your that's your bread and butter pretty that's much. That's what what people come for. That, that, that's big money. So you were saying about the guy making doctor money. Now, there is a tattoo artist that make a shit little money, isn't there? Pretty much every good tattoo artist. Right every now good tattoo artist. Is is making six figures. Nice, brother. You know, this is this is these are fools that some come from prison, some come from the, you know, street life, some dorks, some just you know, just what it, all walks of life are making this. Right. It's just an art, bro. It's an art that's been perfected. Yes. And there's a formula now that goes, bro, if you follow these steps, you're going to be great. And when you say a formula, what kind of steps are it's, you? It's, it's really on just, it, I mean, not only the machine, the inks you're using, the, the way you stencil, the way you lay it in there, who you were mentored from. Like, there's certain 
formulas and steps where you know you are going to eventually be in the six figure range. Nice, brother. Yeah, I, I've got a couple of buddies that do it. And yeah, do they make great livings, brother? And guys come out of prison for a Crazy. long time and and doing their thing. Did you ever think when you first started tattooing that you know you'd be making a living and, and doing what you do with it? I mean, I maybe had self doubt in me. Yes. But I already knew what these dudes were making. I mean, you pull up to the shop, dog, and, you know, and it, 12, 13 years ago, and there, there's S classes, there's seven right. series, there's, I mean, dog, like, it's $100, crazy, right? dollars cars at a tattoo shop with all gang members. Like, it's fucking nuts. Right. You wouldn't even believe. What's the, what's the most expensive tattoo you've ever seen somebody, or you've ever seen somebody pay for? Not necessarily it has to be you, but for just in general that somebody's paid for for a piece. Um, like a one session piece, I would say maybe like about four thousand. Ooh. Now is it just because that's the artist is doing it? It 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 has a lot to do with who's doing it. And when you say one session, how long is one session considered to a tattoo artist? As long as it can hang, or nah, that's kind of old school. Um, it's pretty much people don't realize your day starts the time you start designing. So just because we're not touching your yes, skin. Sir. We had already worked five hours now. You're absolutely right. We're designing it. We are sizing it. We're stenciling it. Now we're tattooing it. So by the time we even start tatting you, we had already worked half a shift that someone was already working in the real world. Right. Yeah. That's we, where the big bucks come. We don't see that. No, everyone just goes all day session where you only tatted me five hours. But it took five hours to design. Right. So this is a full-blown day, homie. Now we just worked 10 hours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's what people just don't see. I saw um, today on the news, uh, man, they're coming for your jobs now, Holmes. They got damn machines who are doing tattoos. Did you see that one yet? <laughs> nah. Hey, hey, folks. AI? Yes. AI N is doing not tattoos. Yes, bro. Yes. But right Right now, it's only about this big. And it's got to be in a what? Like, well, no. It, no, it, the lady... Had her arm down. They put the the machine right here, and like, and she had a Mona Lisa. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about. It looked like it was just beautifully stamped off of H. I mean, it's like a printer. Yeah, yes, like an HD printer, but it's a tattoo. You know that's gonna change the game, bro. I I, I don't care what people say. There are, there are always gonna be the people like myself and yourself and the tattoo guys, like you know, core that. No, that's not a real tattoo. But eventually when you walk and you see somebody has their hand, it looks like some some artist that, you know, came back from the 14th century. And drew yeah. It, I mean, everything is possible in this day and age. Homie. Yeah, bro. I'm, I mean, the machines are taking over everything. And also I saw, and I don't know if it was a rumor or whatnot, uh, Big Boy, the the homie from, I think it's from somewhere in Orange County. The, oh, the oh um, yeah, yeah, from Strength Cartel. From Strength Cartel. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was him, and I could be wrong, and I apologize if I am, but somebody that they got, they got uh, put under. Anesthesia. Anesthesia to do a whole back piece. So I don't, I didn't know, I didn't see him because yeah. I, I know. It may have not been yeah, him. Okay, it I may not be him. Boy, we, we chop it up and I see him here and there. Well, next time you see him, you can ask him. I'm going to ask him. For was, sure. was it you, Holmes? But it's happening every day. It is, huh? This is a new thing too. Technology. Yeah. Homies with big money, they, they can say, hey, fool, I could get, I could look like this and not feel not one thing. That's fucking. It's cool. nuts. That's nuts to me, dude. I did my back. I did it in two sessions. Two eight hour sessions, bro. Back and that shit hurt. Oh, bro, my my homie. Back, oh, my legs were like oh, everything. Yes, <laughs> it depends what part of the back oh. they're hitting, bro. And yeah, it was one. The first day, I was like, "Dude, you're crazy." I said, no, "I'm gonna bang this shit out." I went there with my. I did. I took my beer, took my drink. I'm I'm over there getting it. The next day, bro. Well, your body is already done. Oh yeah, you you're damn near in shock at that point. Yes, bro. Yeah, I, I was down. And the next day, it it just any little touch. It, it was, was just, so tender, bro. Yeah. It was so tender. I can't, but hey, bro, big ups to you, dog. Yeah, yeah. Big ups to you, homie. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I don't even want to get tatted no more, dog. That shit hurts. It does hurt. Hell but, yeah. But there is something. You know what? I've never touched my arms. I, I've yet to touch my arms. Hey, turn the crank the AC on over here, Chris. Yeah, there you go. We're, uh, we're talking about some deep stuff. No, I but needed to show my outside, head. The AC, yeah. There you go, homeboy. How's it feel in the head, carnal? It hurts. And it sucks because you got to go over it all the time. 
Oh, I didn't know that. But all the hair follicles, bro, like ah. they just push the ink out. Like it gets very light. So you have to hit it and then you typically got to do another couple hour session to make it dark. I didn't know that. That makes a lot of sense. What, what you got over here? You got a doggy over there? pit that passed. Yeah, I got the shark. All the top oh, of the man, we're meant to be. I, I got I got my, both of my dogs have passed on my leg. Homie. Really? Yeah, but I got them even before they passed. Homie. Okay. That's okay. how much yeah, I got. Yeah, I got them before. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah they're my, They were my kids. Homie. Yeah, bro. I haven't been able to get any more dogs, even though I have seen my wife on TikTok with their little puppies lately. My wife refuses. She says, I'm going to lock her down with the baby. Yeah. Well, I said, where am I going to go? To the studio? <laughs> <laughs> but what it really is, 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 dude, it's a heartbreak, bro, when you lose a, when you lose a pet. I, we talk about it all the time, bro. We, me and my wife, she, she had to delete a bunch of stuff for storage. I don't know. And we were just looking back and just, when you see a video of you, your dog that was alive at the babies, bro, homie, it's, it's, it, people don't realize dog that love is different. I had to, I had a, a basset hound and a shih tzu, right? The troller with the basset and the shih tzu. <laughs> uh, my basset hound passed away and then, and he was, I think Scooter was like 12 or 13 years old. My Shih Tzu, I thought was gonna live another five years because the little dogs. Nah, dude, he went like four, four to six months max after my basset hound. Bro, that's how it happened with our dogs. They went eight months apart from each other. Bro. Yeah, yeah, and I thought, no, nah, the Shih Tzu's gonna live much longer. They live because 15, little 20. little yeah, dogs they, tend to. Yeah. No, dude, no. He 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 was. I was like, dude, and oh, bro, I went for uh for uh my my shih tzu he just passed away he was at my mom's house actually he just passed away overnight right my basset i had to put him to sleep oh mm -hmm. it was heartbreak bro because he had cancer in the butt and he had a mm -hmm. thing growing then he couldn't really use the restroom and then he was just like uh, poor, like you see him hurting and then the the worst part i called the lady to come uh put him to sleep at my house i was like yeah. i'm not taking him we'll mm -hmm. do it at home we take him and Oh, bro! I see him with energy. You know how they just get that that spurt of energy. You're he, like, there's no way he's like, yeah. But it's it it's just excitement. Yeah, he moment. sees dad, and I give him ice cream, and he's. I'm like, oh, bro! I look at my wife. I'm like, I can't do, oh, I can't do this. Like, are we making the right decision? Yeah, we make. But then I'm looking, I'm seeing him. I'm like, nah, dude, he isn't. Oh, bro, I, I cried like a baby. Oh, I'm not gonna. I I cried for weeks, dog. Right. I would just drive homie and hear a song. I would hear war or something, bro, you know, like, yeah. and I would just be like, just tears, dog. Or that's that's, you that's the door 12, open, 13 years of yeah. no judgment. Yes. Of, of just unconditional love, homie. You could do some dirt right outside that front door. And the uh -huh. minute you walk in, they're not judging you. They're just excited to see you, bro. They never have a bad day, bro. Ever. That's Unless you make him that bad baby with bad owners you know yeah bad yeah the better but like when you have a dog and you treat him right bro, no dude no no it, it, it's even if you're having a bad day you're on the couch you know we all have bad days you know they'll come up to you and just be like and you're just like oh bro just it's something about it dog. Yeah. oh I, I i mean it's dog dog people are very special people they got good hearts for sure because they understand OG Steve, ten dollars super chat. Salute from Allerton, the Bronx, New York. As one of our uh, one of our big supporters out of uh, the Bronx, New York. The Bronx, okay. baby. Shout out to New York. So, the Bronx. I've when, been out to New York. Yeah, you've been everywhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. right. Hey, is New York full of rats, Carnal? And I'm talking. I'm talking about six nine. I'm <laughs> talking about. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to ask yeah, him. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Nah, um, I didn't see a lot of rats like that. I I rode the trains. I went to Brooklyn. I went. I went everywhere, but I didn't see him personally. I don't know. Maybe I follow TikTok rats. That's why I follow. Homie, there. you see anything on TikTok? Yeah, right? that's true. But now nah, New York is like infested, bro. I seen the. There's this one thing on YouTube that people go around. Those little oh no, people are getting paid, right? Yes, they get the dogs and they go and they go hunt them. Yep, they go hunt them. That's how much fucking rats there in New York, bro. They'll never get rid of them. They said they're all over the sewers over there, everywhere, bro. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles need <laughs> to come out there, bro. <laughs> Do you like New York? It was. I mean, I I had an a, an experience. I don't think anyone from my city has ever. I got invited to go to Sway in the morning. In the morning, really? On the day Trump got elected, and do a entire interview with Sway and um. And I and I rapped on his show, bro, and it was like legendary. Did you homie. performed, fool. It was legendary. That's what's up, man. They, yeah. they they called you out just for that. Yeah, bro. He heard a project and he wanted to interview me. 
That's fucking dope, brother. That's like something no one could ever take from me, though. For sure. You know, for there's, sure. There's nobody in my city that said that they that could say they did that. Now, which is one of your uh your most favorite songs that you did as far as rapping that you're proud of? You know what? A, a song that's impacted a lot of people, and I wrote it at a very, very dark time, which is a very weird, you know, thing to say. Like I could be this sad, but it's inspired so many people, was a song called Enjoy. And it's a word we tend to forget to to use often, you know, like, like enjoy this very moment right yes. now because we could walk out this door and never have it again, you Absolutely. know? And I think that resonated with so many people, bro. And that's one of the songs Sway heard and, and invited me out for, you know? Now, what what's the song about? Being, what if this was my last day right now, very last moment? How are you going to enjoy this? How are you going to enjoy this time? Who are you going to hang with? Who are you going to call? What shoes are you going to wear? If this my last day, then what I'm going to say? Who I'm going to hang with? What songs I'm going to play? What shoes I lace up? What picks I'm going to take? I just might hoop in my favorite Jays. I'll take my dogs on a long walk. Like, it's things like that. What am I going to do if I knew tonight was my last night? And you say that was coming from a dark time, so that's something that you were really thinking in your I head. I was thinking that. But I made it up. It ended up being a beautiful song. Now, was there a certain reason why you were thinking that way? Was it just life kind of? The industry, bro. This industry will put you in a very dark place mm. from one minute to the next. You could be chasing a dream and think this is the way you're supposed to go. But it pulls you in so many different directions. And you start not being yourself. Start coping with drugs. Start... You have this expectation of yourself, dog, that when you don't reach it, you instantly get discouraged and depressed. There's so many people that sell you dreams and you think you're going to be the biggest thing in the world and then it's no. And then you try it again and it didn't happen. Then you try it again and it didn't. How many times does it take for you to end up just saying, fuck, bro, fuck this, you know? And that's where it came from. Wow, the, 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 the promise and the rejection that's not happening. Yeah, but you don't love nothing, bro, unless you've been spit up and chewed out a hundred times and still go after it, you know? Facts, huh, boy? Facts. Shout out to It's That Fool, love and respect from Hater World family. There you go, homie. Team Team Blue Devil, carnal. There it is. Uh, yeah, well, the great thing was there was a beautiful song comes out of it. Beautiful album. You know, I made the best album of my life in the darkest place, darkest time of my life. And that's a lot for a lot of artists. I mean, that's a time that you guys start, you know, your your juices really start flowing and, and you can come out and make stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, artists that aren't afraid to be vulnerable, artists, artists that aren't afraid to really show their true feelings and thoughts. A lot of fools, like we said, in our, like, we're too macho to say we yes. cried, homie. We're too, we don't, we don't do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, but when you could let that go and go, homie, I know there's a million people that feel like me in this moment. I'm giving them hope. And how you were saying how the industry just, you know, kind of tears you up sometimes, builds you up, tears you up. And that goes a lot for just people in general, man. They love to watch you go up, but they it seems like they love just as much to watch you crash out. I mean, bro, we see it all that we see it in sports, music, everything, dog. Like, think about this. I use this all the time. Pacquiao, 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 Pacquiao. The minute he gets knocked out by Marquez, you see every meme in the oh, world. Homie, he's bro. not a champ no more. He's he's done. He's out. He's old. He's yeah. You forget how good he was. You're, I, I got a saying. You're only as good as your last fight. Because that's what they're going to remember you for. That's And that's fucked up. It, it is. When I saw that Pacquiao, people were like, I was like, well, and then Pacquiao wanted his rematch, uh, and Marquez didn't want to give it to him. I said, like, Marquez is scared. He don't want to give him that rematch because yeah. he's got that win on him, and he wants to see. Look how he left him. I, I mean, for him, it was smart. Oh, yeah, for know? him. Cause, but you know you don't, you don't want to get back yeah, in there with Pacquiao. thousand percent. And actually, we're having uh, a guy, uh, Brandon Rios, coming in on Saturday. We're interviewing okay. him. He fought Manny Pacquiao. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be kind of cool to That's dope. talk to Brandon and, uh, and just, you know, Get it from a guy who actually stood in the ring with the legend. Well, yeah, dude, that's a that's a huge and a good hearted legend. You, Excellent. You can see it in like he. There was nothing that man ever said, 
ever did. Yeah. He was about the sport. Classy, bro. Very classy. Classy. Yeah. That, and I think that's what separates a lot of the great ones from, from anybody else. It's the classiness. I heard, uh, I don't know if it's true or not, that him and uh, Mayweather are in negotiations to do another fight, bro. I, re I watched that fight. I Dude, remember. Tell, tell me that won't make numbers, bro. Bro, that's going to blow, uh, what's his name, Paul, whatever. I'll oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know who I think would even do bigger numbers if they they fought like in a year and they got maybe one year left? Imagine if you had a Mayweather Canelo fight again. They will walk away with 150 homie, million homie, each, bro. Because, dog, Canelo was a baby. He was a puppy. Yeah, he was a puppy. In that ring with yes. Mayweather. Yes. And it was it was a beautiful thing to see. Because you've seen how he transcended from that loss. Right. Yeah. That's what that's what separates the normal from the great. There you go. And that's why when the when the guys be talking boxing in here and they name, I said the reason uh Muhammad Ali is considered one of the greatest of all time because every loss he had, he went back. He's like, we're, go. we're gonna run it back. Oh, we're gonna see some pretty interesting dog with this Garcia Haney, bro. Oh, uh, we're going to see it because he's, you know, Garcia's coming off of that Javante Davis embarrassment. Right, right. You know, and this is a this is a big test. Yeah, him. this Haney's is and he's a boxer. bro. This is going to make him or break him, bro. This is it. This is and he has his own issues mentally. Also, I listen, we all do. We, I don't care what it is. You're getting ready for something. You got to, you know, talk to yourself, because if not, if you get into your head too much, you start breaking your own fucking self-conscious. Mm. So with him, yeah, it's it's gonna be a lot of pressure. He's a great fighter, but it might just be where he's not a great fighter. He's just a real good fighter. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, but hopefully, he still, you know, he makes his money and does his thing. Uh, when are they supposed to fight? Like in two weeks? I believe so. Uh, yeah, they just had the weigh-in. Yeah. Uh, uh, or the. I'm or the, excited or the, about this, bro. That's right. I love boxing, bro. So. Yeah, boxing is one of the last few true sports. The only thing is, uh, the only thing I really don't like about boxing is that. There is no mandatory fighting. Like you get a pick and choose. Yeah, and that's bull. To me, okay. it's just like, you know, if if the Eastern Conference, Western Conference of basketball, you're winning, you're fighting each other. And it and it shouldn't be I think it shouldn't be where they strip your belts because Mayweather exposed that belt thing where I don't care about this belt. I'm yeah. keep it. And every belt you have, you gotta pay like nine or ten grand a year mm -hmm. to to just say you have the belt. In other words, they're taxing you to keep the belt. One thousand percent. Right. So Mayweather exposed that where he's like Keep the belt, right? I think what they should do is, if you don't fight your mandatory opponent, you can't fight for a year or some shit like that. Like and that, that's when it hurts your pocket. That's when it hurts your pocket. Like, hey, fool, you better get. In other words, this is the fool you got next in your fate, and Let's that's it. Up. That's it. Because he fought people to get up there to fight you. So and why now is it... he's just gonna sit here and, and just be? You yeah, know? and then you got some of the greatest fighters that ain't ain't. They're not fighting each other until you know it's way too late and they're way past their prime. You you have a, a situation where you have who, who fought that was way old, uh, Hopkins, Hopkins and uh, Hopkins yes. and uh, what uh, Roy Jones Jr. Bro, yeah. it was come on. <laughs> you want to see the prime fight the prime? Yes, because exactly. Th that's what makes it legendary. Well, that's what made boxing in the seventies, eighties, nineties. Holyfield, Tyson, yeah, you're talking, you're, bro, you're talking Larry, Lou, are, yes. yes, major fights, major fights. Uh, the heavyweight division, why has it gotten so sloppy, bro? Heavyweights before used to look it, like it, Mike Heavyweights Tyson. before were, that was the division. Yes. That was, that was the division. Yes, that was it. That was, you're the prime top sporting athlete in the world. Yes. You know, they're, they're just as fast, just as agile, just as strong. Hey, looking they're sharp. fighting like a featherweight. They're fighting like a middleweight, you know? Right, right. It's way different now, bro. I I heard from a from a buddy of mine. This was years ago. Um, he used to be into boxing a lot. Uh, he said that most of the heavyweights are going to the NFL. The, wow. The big big guys. He's like they if because think about it. You got guys like Klitschko. Mm -hmm. Imagine a guy like Klitschko playing football. He's like, offensive lineman blocking for Tom you, Brady. Yeah, you're you're playing 12, 16 games a year. Instead of going in here and getting a million dollar contract, instead of going in here and getting beat down all day long, I was like, yeah, it it, it kind of makes sense because you just even the the look, very few have the look anymore. Oh, the, really? None. I mean, I know there's, I know Wilder was a very what? fit heavyweight guy. You but know, he got but exposed. He wasn't that great of a boxer. And then you think Fury, he does not have the body at all, and he's killing and these he's, guys. He's a fool in there, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that guy, bro. He's uh, crazy. He, he was like, I think Ruiz had an opportunity to really, really take it to the next level on that on that rematch. Yeah. But as soon as I saw him coming back into the ring, I said, no, nah, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Because even if he would have lost that second fight, which he did, even if he would have lost it, but if he lost it putting in work, he would have got Bro, he would have yeah. got more deals to do these yeah. huge fights. Yeah. And now they're just looking at him like you were a, you know, a one-hit wonder, which was excellent for the culture. Yeah. But the rematch, I think, I think, yeah, I think he was just, you know, maybe a little bit too much partying and just preparation. Preparation. Like we talked earlier, even the 60 second thing, like homie, like just anything you do, prep for it. Yeah, I had an interview with his trainer at the time. Um and I I didn't press record, bro. <laughs> And this was immediately that after. That was great. Yeah, it was immediately after the fight, right? And he, and he told me after the second fight, like about maybe a month or two after the second fight. And he told me, bro, he's like, I couldn't get him in the gym. He said, he would send me videos saying, look, I'm jogging, I'm running. And I'm like, you're sending me a video? Like, there was no, there was no discipline. There was no, like... Ganas, what cha- what makes somebody great is all right, dude. I won. Their not, hunger, yeah, the hunger, bro. And it seems like a lot of us in our community will like. I've seen guys who will get a one hit and get all right, dude. This is it, and then they just they lay off the gas. Like, no, nah, bro, this is where you hit the gas. Yeah, this is where you take it to a next level. People say, shit, I want to see this guy again, bro. But when you saw that coming out, like, oh man, this guy's not as you're supposed to be disciplined. I, I, I really trip out on people that think that way yeah that don't have that hunger in them that get the blessed with the opportunity of a lifetime get a certain you know level in life and just go i'm pump the brakes and i'm okay right i understand you got to enjoy what you work for yes that's mando we all got to take a step back and you know thank god for what we have right in the moment but what makes you not want more yeah i i I think it's just it's just laziness bro it's just a, a lot of laziness in uh in us unfortunately that we don't have that that big hunger and drive and and until we change that we're not gonna sit there and take it to that next level because well, everybody I mean, else is taking it to the next level I, I, that's all i want to surround myself with dog is people that want more people that are gonna push me to be better People that are going to give me game that I could soak up, that I could take here and give my family. and friends. Absolutely, like, brother. If they're not on that wavelength, dog, I don't even need to be around it. For sure. Because I want to be great. And I think everyone, you know what I'm saying, around me should want to be great. And if Absolutely. I can make you great, take it. If you yeah. can make me great, I'm going to take yeah, it. Yeah, like at Rocky's wedding, bro. Nothing but winners, homie. And when I say winners, I'm not talking about millionaires. I'm not talking about this. There is some guys in there who are fucking millionaires. But I'm talking about winners with that mentality. Like, nah, fool, I'm trying to elevate this thing, man. I'm trying exactly. to I'm trying to stop sweating the small stuff. And yeah, you know, show me who you who you hanging with, I'll show you your future, homie. You know? Wow. wow. Right? Okay. That's that's a gem right there. Because it really is. Because it really is, fool. Come with me with your five homies right here, and I'm gonna tell you how. Where are you gonna be? Yeah, pretty much. I tell my homies all the time. Like even when I'm when I'm around young homies, I'm like, "That's gonna be you, fool." Nah, fool. Look where you at, fool. I was there. Yeah. But you gotta make a choice. You're gonna go to the left or right. Are you gonna go down that path? That pathway is there. You go, homie. Yeah. But but I think that's why a lot of people sometimes don't like about the the platform here and I show because I put the mirror out a lot, fool. Yeah, I put the mirror out a lot, like. Like this is look this yeah this is us homie. look at yourself in the mirror yeah this is what you're gonna be in people get upset about that all right we got a four nine nine super chat it's that fool salute to the fool that's mad the hater world is there to show love keep watching hung while we support the real fool <laughs> <laughs> so how far have you seen the technology go from the tattoos I know we got the AI now but uh, and you put me on game on that yeah I fool. didn't see that. I knew the, the anesthesia, the, the sleeping, you know, that's new, the numbing cream, yeah. new, all that. I didn't see the AI. AI's yet. kicked in, homie. How far have you seen it with the with the needles and the guns? I it's it's been the same for year, for a few years now. You know, everyone's using a rotary mostly and and you know cartridges and it can't get too much more advanced. Well, how many uh, don't they have some for like 30 needles when you're doing big shading nowadays? They have it. But they that have, helps though, right? They have 30 mags they have little three mags it, it helps it helps yeah but that... 
I don't. I've never really used a big, big Mac. I started off with a guitar, guitar string on my stomach, yeah, yeah, and it looks like a guitar string. I know. I've been chatted by that, dog. <laughs> with the one single needle, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I was that guy, but instead of the leg, I got the stomach yeah. done. <laughs> I was the guinea pig. I was, yeah, bro. Yeah, but I, I see the the needles and all that, but, I mean, that does help, doesn't it, for the shading I mean, and all that stuff? The, the, they're just getting more quality. Okay. You know, they're they're not as dull. They're sharp. They're You know, you, you pay for what you get for. You know, there's companies out there that make very good equipment you know so you don't want to half fast on what you're using because the better equipment the better your tech's going to be that's right it is in the artist but you want to you need that advantage too you know absolutely all right brother look at this hundred dollars super chat man appreciate that my man hit that like support ac hater worlds in the building salute ac ac baby yeah we we try and that's what we're doing homie we elevating the game we uh we're showing the homies that are shining in the positive way, Carnal. Because yeah. you know what? Yeah, you can go to Fool's Gone Wild if you want to see all the other foolishness. No, no, no cap at them, but yeah. I'm just saying in general, fool. Gotcha. We, we're trying to elevate the game and show them that, you know, we can actually, you know, be very successful at being in the same culture that yeah. we're in, homie. I mean, and I, I feel like that's huge, and I salute you for that, bro, because there is a lot of people not using the platform for the right way. Right. You know? Right. And you are. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, yep. and you do a good job at it and you bring people in that are going to do that for you. Absolutely. You know, because you're learning. You could learn yes. from your guest. Yes. Like I'm learning from you right now. Yes, brother. Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to have a uh, triple OG in here in a couple of weeks. He's going to put me on the route. He's, he's going to put me on the routine. We talked about it at the party. I'm, you're going to be doing burpees right here. No, so. fool, I'm going to I'm going to be his uh, I'm going to be his uh, promotional. Oh, his promotional I'm, guy. No, but for, no, for real. real. I swear to God. I, we talked about it. This is what we're going to do. And I'll let it be known right now. He's going to give me the regiment. I Boom. told, And I'm great at following the regiments if I have to, right? All right, fool. I'm going to follow it. And we're going to take a picture before. We'll take a picture after a month or two. And by summertime, homie, I should be walking around yoke like I got a YA for the fucking fourth time, <laughs> homeboy. Because I, I, got, I got that muscle memory, homeboy. You do, homie. Yeah, I see it through I, the sweater. Yeah, I got the muscle memory. Well, what I did, I stopped drinking for like three months. Okay. And it was going good, but then I noticed, like in the last few weeks, I said, wait a minute, but my eating habits, actually, I was bored more and I was snacking more. Yeah. I was like, it wasn't working. I was going, and I'm going to the gym, so I need to definitely get on a routine where, all right, fool, give, me, give it to me, let me follow it, and it'll be real cool to see the transformation. I mean, I know off top it works. Oh, sh because I just lost 40 pounds on his program. That's what I was going to ask you next. I saw some pictures before and, and now. So so I went from 190 to 150. Nice. Um, I think I was over 25, 30% body fat, and now I'm at 5% body Jeez, fat. Jeez, bro. That's what's and up. And his plan works, dog. It's science. This isn't a guess. This isn't a game. This isn't a flu. This isn't a homie. If you follow these things... All you're going to do is succeed. He's not going to give me a bolsita, right? And say, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to give you some easy instructions, dog. For a man like you that knows discipline and hard work, you're going to see a crazy change. Homie. Yeah, yeah. because be before the before uh, COVID kicked in, I went on a straight discipline thing. I lost 40 pounds. I was, I was down to 205, bro, like ripped, right? Yeah. And then COVID kicked in, bro. That it, fucked everybody. Yeah, all the gyms, bro. And I'm a, I'm the kind of guy. I need to go to the gym, bro. I can't. I, I won't do it at home. I yeah, got stuff at I, home. I can't but, either, dog. Yeah, it's like it's like trying to study, and I'll be go. To, I go to the library. Go to the gotcha. library. So I, I stopped going to the gym, and then sure enough, the, the no, the eating, the drinking, yes. the homemade pull up, yeah, like, yeah, the barbecue, whatever. Yeah, it's 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 Saturday. We're gonna drink. Oh, it's Sunday. We're gonna drink. It was a, it was a weekend every day in it, COVID. Monday's been tough. We're gonna drink. Like damn, Tuesday it's almost hump day. We're gonna drink. Jeez. Like you know, th Thursday margaritas, and then it's Friday, and and here we go. It's a it's a it's a tornado. Of it's a, a spiral, vicious cycle, bro. bro. Yep. And what I love about what uh. What Triple OG, you, uh, Strength Cartel, and a lot of the guys who are coming out, I think Wero's another one. There's a bunch of fitness guys out there now. I love that because it's putting the fitness back into us, homie. If you look at some pictures of the homies back in the 90s even, mm. and you look at them, 80s, 90s picture, yeah, yeah, you always have your chubby homies. That's just part of who we are. But it was you'd see like, let's say 12 guys, you see one or two chubby guys, and the rest of the guys are all fit. No, bro. they're in their slingshot food and looking nice. Like now it's 
the complete opposite, opposite, bro. It's the complete opposite. You got a bunch of guys. And the sad part is, listen, I can see if you're in your 40s and all that, and you got out of shape, you got older. If you're in your 20s and you're completely just because some is not even genetic anymore. Some are genetic, but some guys are just fucking lazy. Yeah, and, and it comes, slobs. And, and I think them taking weights from jail really, believe it or not, made a lot of that, bro, because a lot of guys... You come out of jail before you're most of the guys, not all. I see some lazy guys in there. You'd be fit. Yeah. But nowadays it's like, I mean, bro, it, there's a big change in the world right now in fitness, you know, and you see it all over TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, or whatever TV. I mean, you name it, you see it. And what triple told me was Tom, if, if, if you take this serious, watch the things that start aligning in your life. Mm. okay because you're putting something into the world and you're putting it into your body and that's just gonna align things in your life and and you don't understand it at the time right but when you start getting right with you things start falling on your lap and in place for sure you know and it, it, I'm, I'm seeing it and then i start going back and going how come I got my oil changed every time the light came on? How could you, you know, if the tire's flat, you get air. How come I went and washed up my Rolex and how did I iron my jeans, dog? How come I'm caring about so much shit, but not myself? Sir. Yes, Everything sir. needs maintenance, dog. So if your car needs it, your body needs it. Yes. You yes, know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Your mind needs it. Your spirit needs absolutely, it. Absolutely, like, brother. We need it, homie. Absolutely. And the better I am here connected dog better i am for everyone around me absolutely brother you know yeah we definitely have uh health issues in our in our community homie and uh we need to just step it up somewhat man um we had well we talked a little bit about frost coming in right kid frost and he that's one thing when we spoke today earlier um that he's like gil i really want to talk about health because i have some health issues and i want to i said of course frost whatever you want homie the you know the microphone's yours and the tables the table's there so it's good to see that we're waking up to that yeah. and it'll be dope to have a trend where you know you see a lot more homies getting in shape homie because i think also a lot of times the guys who can get in shape and they're not is holding us back because the reason a lot of the brothers and all that because you see a guy he's all fit of course a kid wants to be like that yeah a kid gravitates to that that's a sports guy that's the rapper guy that's the actor guy if you see a guy that's completely no it's not gonna gravitate where hey that's the cool guy right exactly. there exactly that's just you know we don't i don't want to be that that's what the kids see yeah. so i think the more we see guys doing that is the more you're gonna get more roles on tv more roles in the movie more people wanting to sit there and you know get your music and all that stuff. Do you I agree? I mean, people just take you way more serious yes. when you take yourself way more serious. Because you're showing you have discipline. There it is. People take you way more serious if you take yourself way more serious. That went over a lot of people's heads because you can instantly tell when someone is right, you, you instantly go, he's on his shit. Yes. He's dangerous, dog. Yeah. He's dangerous here. Physical, everything. Yes, absolutely, brother. Absolutely. So now let's get back to the tattoo uh, stuff. I'm over my gym stuff. We'll be we'll be doing the routine here. <laughs> it's my it's my 49th birthday next month. So Man, for, bro. For, I I told uh, Triple OGS, yes, listen, for right after my 49th birthday, we're gonna get on this. That way, for my fifth, I want my 50th birthday to be this. I want it to be. I want to be the most healthy I ever been since my 20s, homie. And that, if, that's what I'm pushing. That for. shit's crazy, bro. Because you can. Yeah. Cause you, but you gotta put in the work. You can, you and gotta. you will. Yeah, I, I will, and you bro. Will. I will. So it'll be, it'll be nice to go into my fifties looking like I'm you excited, know, back when bro. I was in my twenties. I'm like, let's run it. <laughs> <laughs> so tattooing. How long have you been doing it now? Thirteen years. Thirteen years, huh? Yeah. What, what's the, what is one of the biggest highs in your tattoo career? You would say. I'd say when, when I opened up my own shop. You know, that's something that you never think as a, you know, as a kid or like having keys to your own place. Absolutely, brother. You know, these, a lot of these dudes out here want to, you know, always say, I stand on business and I'm doing, but homie, like you don't even have keys to your own business. How are you standing on business? Full stand on business. They don't even have bank accounts, fool. Or, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's Keep like, it 100, Cardell. I really take pride in that, dog. You know, like you, you can go to your own place at any time. Yeah. And say, this is me. 
you know, and I, and I think people need to just open up their minds and I know you got to work and sometimes you get stuck in that nine to five, but that was a big turning point to take that risk, leaving a well-known shop where you know you're going to get fed work right. and taking that risk and going, dog, I'm just going to do it and believe. Yes, that's what you do, brother. That, that, but that's what separates the, the bosses from just the workers. You got to have that mentality. I remember when I left work, I was the same thing. Uh, my wife's like, well, what are we going to do? I was like, I don't know. But nowadays, like, well, there's, I, don't, I don't sweat it. It's like you, you've, you've been doing it for so long that you're, it's, it it's going to come. It's going to come, brother. Yeah, yeah, if you're doing it right, it's going to come. Yeah, yeah. So what was the point that how long were you working at the, at the shop you were at before you? Um, I, I think a good, like five, six years. And you're making great money. Yeah. Yeah. Environment was cool. People. I mean, you know, was it just, you outgrew the place and you say, you know what? I want my own. I just had clothing going on, music going on and tattooing. And if I stayed in a certain place, I couldn't do it all. Okay. Now, if I built out a place where I could record, sell my clothes and tattoo at the same time. I could be in one place and do everything I love. That's right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. that was the decision. That's, sure. that's the only thing that led me out of that shop because it was an amazing place. That's what's up, man. Now, was there any, like, uh, anxiety when you got your place? Were you nervous about it? I, bro, I didn't even know how I was going to do it. You know, I had doubts. I was like, bro, how, how am I, bro, you're leaving the number one shop, I would say, in Southern California. What was the name of that shop? Ink Slingers in oh, Alhambra. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. You're talking. For sure. Brian, Chante, Tommy, Bobby, That's Fernie. Right, yeah. I mean, homie. You those think, guys, those are the guys who do those magazine stuff, dude. They had those bro, beautiful. They're, they're the best, you know? And, and they're, they still they are. They still, right, for sure. You know, so leaving that is, is but once again, it's, you got to step out your comfort zone. If you want to be anything greater than what you are now, you, you're going to be uncomfortable. So where is it your shop that you open up at? Covina, hometown. Ah, that's what's up. You're like, you're like American Cholo, homie. You stay in the city. Yeah, yeah. It, isn't it beautiful that you're like, I'm a business owner in my city, homie? Like, it's, it's amazing. Right? It's amazing. And I, I kept it that way, dog. There was other opportunities, other cities, cheaper rent, cheap, you know. But it was important, dog, if I rep my city and I give, that's my way of giving back. Right. I get to employ people in that city. That is dope, brother. I get to bring light to my city. I get to do interviews in my city. Mm. I get to show my city. That's what's up, my boy. Now, when you first moved in there, did you find a spot and you're like, all right, this is it? Or, I mean, we were, it, it, was, it was a while ago and it was just, it was a lot of looking, a lot of, but we knew it was its own little, it wasn't in a lot. It was by itself. And we just were like, bro, this is perfect for us for a start, you know? That's right. And then you, you, you got the clothing stuff in there too, or what? We had clothing in there in the front. Then we had tattooing. What's the, the name back. of the clothing brand? So there were, there were two brands or at the time in there, it was TFC, which is my brand, which is top of the food chain. Oh shit. I like that. And then mistaken, which was. Um, a brand me and my buddy pretty much created in high school, bro. Mistaken? Yeah. Where do you get that from that? Just always being misunderstood. Oh, I, okay. You know? I mistaken like that. Mistaken for who we really are because we look this way doesn't mean we are that way. Hey, how can you, like, when you go to the barbershop, usually the, the well, usually the worst barber, not that I'm saying any of the tattoos are the worst, is in the very back or at the beginning barber, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 you put them in the back, you put the best barbers in the front. Yeah. How does it work for a tattoo shop? Where does the new guy go? The shittiest area in there. It doesn't mean <laughs> far away from the clients. Maybe go to the toilet? It means like, yeah, like it's either small, crunched, you know, like it ain't the best place. <laughs> okay. That's the one. Oh, I don't want to work there. I'll work over there, you know? Okay, it's the, it's the last place somebody wants to pick for the. That's it. Okay. That's it. Like, what's the. What's the craziest like tattoo place you've ever gone into? Like, damn, this is a tattoo shop? Like, what the fuck? You got an alley? Like, I mean, I, nah, I mean, I've, I've been to, I've seen shops in the indoor swap meet, dog. Oh, yeah, the swap meet got North Hollywood got a major right here. Yeah, dog. Like, North Hollywood got no. You know, homies that have them in the garage. There's, everyone's tied I see nice garages. You know, yeah. Like, you can make something, like you said, it looks, but the inside is beautiful. You yeah, know? right here at the North Hollywood. Give a shout out to North Hollywood. Swap me. How many we got? 
tattoos. We got the you got the piercing. You got I even go there for my chiropractor, fool. Damn. I, I ain't even lying. There's a there's a there's a chino over there that hooks it up. He even puts those those cups oh, on your I, back. I've never done that. Oh, dude, he does the cup. He does it all, bro. I mean, you name it, homie. You got it at the swap meet, carnal. I mean, that's just the name of the game, homie. That's right. I love swap meets, dog. So how's uh, the tattoo business going for you right now? It's amazing, bro. I mean, we're we're all blessed. How many how many guys you guys got there? Just me and a homie. Just you and a homie. We, it's not open to the public. It's just private. Oh, it's appointment only. Yep. Oh, that means you're charging that good money, homie. I mean, if yeah. It, anytime it's just appointment only, it's exclusive, carnal. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could charge how you want to. Of course. You know. But there's just something that it comes with with the clients. Right. You know, it's it's not a crazy environment, dog. You know? Yeah, I get when it. When you're with eight. When yeah. you walk into a barbershop with eight homies yeah. cutting, it's loud. There's music. There's, yeah. You, there's yeah, a I different vibe, you yes. know? Now, if you come into a private shop and you're, uh, you know, you know, an older lady just lost her husband. She's bringing her kids with her and this is a special moment. They have to feel it. I comfortable get absolutely i get you that. know so there's pros and cons the private and open right you know there's then not there's some days that are a little bit like there's not nothing going on and it's quiet and you want the activity you know yeah for sure but yeah i can see that like in a big shop and i've gone into i'm, I'm usually the loud guy going into the big shop with the so, beer homies yeah, 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 ice yeah. Cast, dog. What's up, boy? what you yeah, doing yeah, yeah. And there's some serio guys and they're like oh, I, gotta, yeah. I don't i'm not feeling this energy right they now just smoke the fat one just. <laughs> So yeah, that that uh, that's that's pretty dope though when you when you have that private experience. Now, one mistake that I've always had, and I'm sure you can relate to this, is I'm like, and I've gone to the homie uh, kid, uh, and I've asked, "Hey fool, I want this tattoo on my leg. Like, figure it out. Like, I want this, I want that." And he's like, "Give me a pattern, fool. Like, I'm not I'm not gonna figure it out for you. I'm not I'm not." And I'm like, "Dude, what's up, man? Like, like no." Nah. In other words, I finally got the hint. Like, no, nah, do I want to? figure out a pattern me put it on you then eventually say oh i don't really like this yeah it's that's tough because some fools just think hey fool, work your just, wicked just magic yeah. Yeah. that's what homie. a lot What's of people say head, right fool like you gotta come with something right because dog you could work on a on a design for three hours and do a skull with the web and a black widow and a flower and then they're like oh me i don't like uh, i don't like skulls and you're like, well, fool, you told me to do anything. Yes, exactly. You know, so you do want to get them in the right direction. And I think that's advice for anything, you know. How do you stay away from doing tattoos that are repetitive? You don't. It you, it's money, homie. Okay. You know, and that's a thing. Like, you're either going to go, I did a lion yesterday and my next client wants a lion portrait. And I, I'm not going to turn that down, fool, for price that i'm gonna charge you know yeah you're not gonna say well i just like, didn't like i got this. bills dog you know it does it, it does get a little bit mentally challenging okay but it's work dog there's some fools that change tires all day long this is true eight hours a day seven days a week this like, is true you know so this i you, true. You, but it's work right you know i can't choose what you're gonna get but does that make it more work that day if you have like a back-to-back -back guy you're like ah I don't like doing the same thing in the same day. That's where it gets. Some fools will come in and they want them, you know, two sisters and they want, I want to this here and on her the same thing. Oh, they want and the then, magic bro, tattoo. That tat ain't going to look the same identical. It's not. Especially this isn't AI, day. homie. Especially, you know? yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, saying, if you go to AI, you can have It's going to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, so you, now you're just, fuck, they don't look like that. I, I got to do that darker. It makes it challenging. You know, do you use the creams at all? The nummy creams? I don't buy them, but if they bring it, so I'll that use so it. that's the trick. I'll use it because there's somebody to say I ain't using that shit, homes. You you gonna end up buying it, bro? No, you, you got to, man. You should make your own line of cream already, I mean, bro. I've been if thinking you, about it. Yeah, you got a yeah, you got AI coming, homie. You might as well make your own cream before. I, the good thing is, even like myself, bro. I do structural concrete. We're at the final end where we'll be able to finish off our careers without a problem, without yeah. uh, having to fight off AI. Gotcha. The younger generation that's probably, let's say, guys who are 16 right now. Oh, yeah. They're going to have a big issue, bro. Yeah. They, they really are. I mean, the way technology is going, shit, you might be able to get some of those Hannah tattoos, put it over your skin, and it'll just absorb in there somehow. And Bro, you don't know now. 
I, I'm tr- I I thought like now haircuts like is that gonna I wonder if that is good. I, I, why not? I just don't get how AI would be able to gauge somebody's skin tone. It's AI for their muscular structure. Like I just don't get how the, it touches it. How it like? How does it? Let me, let me see if I could. Let me see if I could find it real quick. Let me see. Cause I'm gonna trip out, bro. AI tattoo. Uh, not not tattoo the damn guy from. <laughs> not him. Huh? <laughs> the plane. The plane. Uh, uh, let me see if I got it here. No, that can't be AI tattoo, bro. I just saw it today, bro. Now these are these are the ones that they generate. That's a, well, that's another thing that AI is generating the actual patterns out there. Yeah, no, dog, you can literally go the uh, uh, angel with uh, mountains in the background yes. with butterflies flying. Dog, it'll drop for you. Yes. Oh, bro. Leg piece, bro. Leg piece. Look at that. Mm. He's on a couch. He's on a couch with his leg inside the machine. And the machine's going to go, do whatever it does, bro. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude. Look at that. They're coming. They're coming. It's and uh, For some of you guys ain't seen it, it looks like a big box. And the guy just has his leg in there. And they got a bunch of needles around him. Uh, luckily, I got some other, you know, businesses <laughs> popping, dog. <laughs> Or I'm going to just invest in an AI machine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, the first AI machine. Oh, the tattoo guys will fucking want to kill oh, you, bro. You, but hey, somebody's going to do it. I if, mean, dog, with the, the dudes that are, you know, using the anesthesia now at their shops, they're already getting shit on. Yeah, of course. You know, everyone's going to have something to say. But of it's course. like, me, like, this is the new this way. This is what they're doing. This is, like, bro, like, just, it ain't bothering me. Fuck it. Until it's, until it until is. Until it's taking my job, you know? <laughs> Well, eventually, the other one are like one of those arms you see in the in the automotive industry. Right? Yeah, where it gets. Yeah, the... it, it just so imagine you get that you put it in a booth, and then could you imagine the guys after a while? Everybody's like, "Oh no!" Instead, you know, the barber. I'm waiting for this guy. Oh no, I'm waiting for the machine. Fool. Yeah. Oh, he'll be done in ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> His name is five four four D bot or yeah. something. <laughs> Hi Z, homeboy. Oh, boy. Hey, but. That's where we're going. I, I, I guarantee you. I mean, we, I don't know if we'll see. I think we will see it if we live long enough, right? If we if we if we stick on if we stick on Triple G's fucking oh, we're diet on. plan, we're we're, good. we're on for you. Will eventually, just go into his fucking machine, bro. <laughs> you will. You're gonna go into a machine, go like that. Wait, maybe put you to sleep two three hours. You walk out all sleeped out, bro. So, where was the first tattoo that you got? Your very very first tattoo. In my lip. Oh, one, of the, one of the homies, yeah, in the, in the inside. You're one of those guys, huh? Yeah, 420. I love smoking ah. weed. <laughs> one of the homies' uncles just got out, you know, from doing some time, and the, every all the little homies were getting tatted. And, dog, now that I think back, for it was just the same towel the homies using to wipe him, oh. he's using in my mouth. Like, dog, I'm like, <laughs> oh, what was I thinking? For sure. Fools be doing, remember, tattoo parties. Yes. They've been doing tattoo parties and fools be using the same ink. I mean, the same the same ink. Same. Sometimes the same needle. Like, straight up. I've been to tattoo parties back in the 80s and 90s, homie. And, hey, homie, you know, fool get the, and everybody's getting, like, just the, the letters yeah, outline. Yeah, you weren't getting the whole block because they were yeah. the time. Outline, three dots, the dots the here. The little cross. Every, yeah. yeah, bro. And it was all the same, the same ink. <laughs> Uh, and uh and yeah we didn't we were thinking about that but we we're young homie we were young and when foolish. you're young I, I think that's why tats hurt when you're young like they don't hurt when you're young now as i got older bro every tat hurts even more now right because you're not you're thinking now back then you don't think how how tough is it as far as getting any certification do you need all that kind of stuff to open up the shop and all that yeah legally i mean obviously you need to go through the city but as far as being a tattoo artist, you really just need to get a certificate called a bloodborne pathogen. Okay. And you can get that online, bro. So, so you don't need to go to school, go to, you know, very simple to just get to be sanitary. Now, are you like one of those uh, neat freaks in your shop? Like, I, be- I typically, yeah. I, I mean, I treat everyone like if they had AIDS. Okay. Because if I don't, then I'm gonna get sloppy. Then you get yeah, you get caught slipping. And then I also go even further and go now. My next client's gonna be my mom. Mm. So if I treat him like he has AIDS, 
and then my mom's getting tatted after him, I'm never going to have a problem. My shit's clean. Yeah. I need I need to sign up for a tattoo. I haven't I haven't done it in a minute, bro. I I, I actually love the tattoo experience. I love walking in there. It's the really smell. it's usually, yeah, the smell, bro. It's usually this this cold. You have to have a nice and cold yeah. in there. That alcohol smell, everything's wiped down. It's just it there's a it's therapeutic, bro. It is. It it really is. And you start feeling that needle you, know, you you know, and, and you also if it's a good if it's a good uh, tattoo, you're vibing, homie. I think that's a big part of it, homie. Some people would rather pay for a great experience, conversation-wise yes. vibe, and a nice tattoo than an expensive, flawless masterpiece, and a fool don't even talk to you. Yeah, fool. It's connection. It's connection. Bro. Because at the end of the day, I'm I'm pretty much a therapist, too. Yeah, absolutely, bro. I'm, I mean, in this profession, you're kind of like the same, like... There's so many conversations that are going on during this tat. Yes. Why they got it, where they grew up, what problems they're having, could be relationship, finance. Absolutely. So, bro, you, now you become friends. They're not clients no more. They right. come back second time, third time. Now you just know them. For I, sure. I have a lot of friends or clients that became friends. Yeah, it, it, it becomes where they, and that's another thing. They start off with one tattoo, and tattoos are so addicting. Oh, and then <laughs> you start with one guy, and then damn, I sleep this full down. There's no other experience like it, and I think that's where the AI thing could get. You know, it's gonna take away from that day where you go home. I'm going to get a tat. I'm not coming home till later. I'm gonna have a few beers. Yeah, yeah, have a for conversation. Sure. The homie might roll up. You could smoke. Whatever. You're getting away from reality. Yes. Yes, bro. It's it's therapy, dog. Yeah, and especially like the type of tattoos that you do, a lot of them are also, you know, loved ones that have passed away. In, Memorial stuff. Yeah, like mine. I got my brother right here, bro, and it's it's a piece of you, brother. Like when every any time I'm taking a shower, I'm in the mirror. What do I see? I see my carnal right there. Mm -hmm. and it, it just it, it's it's great therapy for for anybody. I think it Big is. Big time, bro. And it made my entire music career, to be honest. So with the music, are you? completely done are you still writing and doing it oh bro yeah I've, I've already dropped two singles this year i have five albums already ready to go this year that's what's up. i worked my ass off last year to be prepared for this year yeah, so are you uh performing anywhere this year that you've got booked or are you still um, looking at places yeah bobby d just booked me on to the bone thugs um, oh, dope. and cypress hill show that's what's up homie um i'll be doing my own headline show towards the end of the year um, we just sold out the Laugh Factory with No Lames. I will. Be oh, the No. Yeah, let's talk about that, man. No Lames at the Laugh Factory. I got invited to do so. I might pull up on you guys. I then. hope you do. What, what city is it going to be in? Covina. Oh, shit. Okay, I'll be there. Downtown. I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah, uh, Rocky and uh, G Money were telling me about yeah. it. I said, yeah, I'll pull up. That Dude, that is so dope because I was telling Rocky, dude, that's what I, that's what I want to do. I want to rent a place out and go out there and podcast. And so you're going to be there. Talk to me about... You know, no names, homie. How did you get involved in these crazy battles uh, podcasts? I've known them for a long time. Okay. You know, me and Rocky go way back. Everything he's done, I've supported. Everything I've done, he's supported. Nice. You know, um, we've seen each other grow tremendously. It's not been perfect and no friendship and no nothing's ever, you Absolutely. know. And right. But we've been able to really connect bro and just say bro why would we do this by ourselves when we could do it together yes sir and i got blessed with the opportunity to come on the show and it's working nice you know just the 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 chemistry the the awareness the the love that that we're getting bro is phenomenal bro and the support from other po it's just it's dope bro for sure man yeah i said it on the duno podcast and you went, man, i appreciate that but it was true it was like one of the like when people and I forgot they asked me this last time. One of my favorite episodes that on, in the studio here that we had was with them two jackasses. No, they they and, tell and I me say that lovingly, the, yeah. bro. And I say lovingly, bro. Yeah. Uh, it it was from start to finish, bro. It was balls to the wall yeah. and just talking shit and doing their thing, brother. So to me, yeah, those guys are dope, man. Uh, what's your position in their in their podcast? You believe? I'm the. The vulnerable one, bro. The one that's going to give you a little bit deeper, a little bit, you know, a, a, a different type of answer than you're going to get from there. Everyone has their character, you know? Right. And and I think in a good show, 
you fall in love with a character. Yes, for sure. You know, and and not all three could be the same. It yeah. wouldn't work. It you wouldn't know? work. Um, right. You can't have five point guards on a basketball court. It's not going to happen. Correct. Correct. So it's working, bro. And that's my position, dog. You know, people know what they get from me, homie. And I think they see it and I think it, it's working. And, and I know what I'm going to get from G Money. And, and I know what I'm going to get from Rocky. And it's a dream team right now, homie. We sold the Laugh Factory out in 24 I hours. I saw that, bro. That is, dude, that is so dope, bro. That is so dope, dude. I, I, that, that motivates me. To yeah. to want to go, and I even told him I want to go there to support you guys, but I also want to go check it out, see how how the whole thing works. Yeah. Because I would love maybe after that, hey, we can we, we got a bunch of uh, like laugh factories out here mm -hmm. in North Hollywood or Ha Ha Factory. We can do the same thing out here, bring you guys over here, and that's what we need to do to grow all our platforms. Start networking with like minded individuals who aren't worried about stupid petty stuff. Hey man, you said this about me last year now, come on yeah. fool we we oh, you better have some shit. thick skin yeah. now have you started noticing that you better have some thick skin for podcasting because it's i came in there with my with with my learning and thinking cap on dog Good. because if you go into a new th like thing thinking you know everything you're gonna fail homie for sure so i knew i i'm not going in with no ego with no I have this many followers. I've done this. I've been in this game, bro. All that didn't matter. Right. I'm coming into your world and I'm going to learn it. Absolutely. bro. And I'm going to respect it. Absolutely. And I told them that when I came in, dog, like I'm now in your world. Yeah. I don't want to hear you guys are beefing in about six months. I'm going to YouTube. Yard, I don't want to hear about that. Oh boy. That can't happen. Dude. That's right. But so yeah. Last question to you, homie. What is a lame to you? Since you are part of the no lame podcast. Um, uh, uh, someone that's not hardworking, lazy, a uh, a uh, uh, a bad parent, you know, a thief, um, a fake, you know, someone that feels like they have to lie to the world to be cool, you know, and think that the world owes them something. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely, I think brother. There's a bunch of lames out there. There, there is, homie, but no lames invited over here, Carnal. <laughs> Hey, hi, Tom, man. I want to I wanna thank you for driving out here. I know it was a long sure. drive, you know, LA traffic, brother. Uh, I want to re-invite you guys when I when when uh, Rocky and G-Money come back on the panel. We'll, we'll come in here and do a boys podcast. I want you to look at the camera over there. Let them know where they could find you on social media. Let them know where you guys are doing that uh, that event at the Ha Ha Factory. Yeah, at or the, the Laugh Factory. At the Laugh yeah. Factory, I'm sorry. Right over there, bud. Let them know. Yo, what's up, man? Once again, thank you for the opportunity, bro. My boy right here, before oh, I even say who I am, man, we're right here on American Cholo. You can find me anywhere, bro. All you got to do is Google, Instagram, too. It's High Tone, H-I-T-O-N-E, man, and you'll find me, bro. We are having a sold-out show, which you can't get tickets for now, oh. at the Laugh Factory with no lames. We got a lot of things going on, music, clothing, podcasts, man. We're just trying to elevate and trying to do the right thing. Absolutely, brother. And with that, hey, people. We appreciate you tapping in with us. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment. I don't care if you're talking shit. It's good for the algorithm. That way we can elevate the platform and elevate everybody that comes with us. Other than that, on Saturday, we got the champ in the building, Brandon Rio, 6 p.m. And then on Sunday, 1 p.m. Hasn't done an interview in over 10 years. Kid Frost will be in the building. With that, we're out.